Good evening and welcome to this session of the live coaching classes organized by the Board of Studies of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Now, today we are going to take up a very, very, you know, old enactment. One of the old enactments, older than India. Yeah, because India got its independence in 1947. Tomorrow we are celebrating our Republic Day when the Constitution of India was enacted and made. We became a sovereign democratic republic. Therefore, we celebrate Republic Day as against Independence Day when on midnight Independence Day we got independence from the British. But our Constitution had not been enacted. Thanks to Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, we got our Constitution which, which, is, uh, which was uh, there on 26th 1, 19 for, uh, 1951. Okay, that is one thing. Whereas this law is 1897. So imagine Robert Clive, not Robert Clive. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make is British law. There are many British laws that are uh, enacted there are by the British Parliament for India, which continue to be law even now. For example, you have your Negotiable Instruments Act, you have your Indian Contract Act, Indian Penal Code. Why do you think they are called Indian? After all, they are formed, made by the, if in, in India, why say Indian? Because these laws were made in England and they were drafted by, by Englishmen for India. <laughs> they called, and they were enacted in the Parliament, British Parliament for India, for the Indian dominions. They got Indian. So it was applicable to India only. It was a very complex time. Not the India that we know, but the larger India, the bigger undivided India. Yesterday we saw no, the PIO, person of Indian origin. Either of his parents or any of his grandparents were born in undivided India. It was went all the way up to Karachi, Lahore, beyond. And this side, uh, you had you went all the way up to Burma and the border. That was your, including current Bangladesh was undivided India. Nepal was included. No, no, Nepal was a king, kingdom. So Bhutan was a kingdom. They were ruled by kings, princely states. Uh, your Kashmir was a princely state. Like that. It was a totally different uh, geography altogether. Okay. So somebody is wishing me Republic Day in advance. Sushil Kumar Barikji. Okay. For the, for the record, you, are, you will also be wishing me happy birthday. Because I was born on 26th January 1966. So for your information. Okay. More for information. Okay. In fact, Swami Chenmayananda says, people celebrate their birthday as if it is something great. What they should remember is their life is becoming less and less. <laughs> Swamiji used to say, when you, when you have a birthday cake and you blow out the candles, remember, what are you doing? You are actually saying your life is getting over to that one more year gone. Lesser number now going forward like that. So whereas we were taking the British and Western culture, we celebrate our birthday as if it is something great. On the other hand, we should use today as to pause and think, what have I done? What am I going to do further? How can I help society? How can I help myself first? How can I help my family? How can I help my organization? How can I help society? Four levels you ask yourself on that day. So you, I usually use birthday as a kind of a wandering day when I will think, and uh, if at all. And uh, sorry, you know, many people will get angry when I say like this because for all, huh? birthday is a good day. Why this fellow is telling like this? Like that. Agreed. Birthday is important, no doubt. But I don't give much importance to birthday except as a reminder that my life is getting shorter and I have to do something better. Okay? Like every for young people, you may not understand it. When I was young also, I never really understood the big thing about uh, birthday celebrations. <laughs> anyway, in my view, I may be wrong, but uh... <laughs> thank you. You're all... Very enthusiastically wishing me happy birthday while I am telling, I am not taking it seriously. Every day, every day is a new day, sir. Every day you are born again. Every day you can be born again. Tomorrow is the first day of the rest of your life. So if you think like that, then every day is a birthday. Anyway, thank you very much for your kind wishes, which I am sure you are doing out of your good heart. Chalo. Now, having said this, 1897, Lord Macaulay, Drafted this law as, as much as your uh, Indian Contract Act, etc., was drafted by Lord Macaulay. And uh, thank you, Diva Kumari, for agreeing that it's harsh 
but it's true. Anyway, so general clauses act 1897. What is the purpose of this law? There are many laws enacted by parliament. There may be some confusion in those laws. In which case, where to get clarity? Some clarity can be given by the general clauses act on certain general principles, how to measure time, how to measure uh, days, how to find all these are given as a common rule, which means the general clauses act will general clauses act will apply to all enactments. So the purpose of this is each enactment need not repeat it again and again. Once it is said here, it will apply to all acts. So one of the objects is to shorten the language of central acts. Only thing is this, this law applies only to central acts, meaning those acts enacted by the parliament, central government, administered by the central government. State legislature ka acts are not governed by this act. But don't worry, each of the states would have their own general classes act, which is similar to the central act. No problem. Okay. So, so to shorten the language of central acts, to provide as far as possible for uniformity of expression in central acts by giving definitions of a series terms. There are many words which are used in laws. These words need not be again and again defined in all laws. So they say we will define it once and for all here. To state explicitly certain convenient rules for the construction and interpretation of central acts. As I told you, uh, name, measurement of time, gender, plural, plural singular, all these are governed here. So you have to refer to the General Classes Act. In case there is any mistake in any law, that can be corrected here. Guard against the slips and oversights by importing into every act certain common form clauses, which otherwise ought to be inserted in every central act. So instead of wasting time everywhere, they say, look here, it's said here. I'll tell a simple thing. Suppose your law is repealed. Suppose your law is repealed. That law is referred to in another law. A repealed law is referred to in an active law. Now, this General Clauses Act, you'll see a clause which says, wherever there's a reference to a repealed act, which has been substituted by a new act, references to the repealed act will amount to references to the new law, insofar as it is applicable. So, very good clarity. Na? So, suppose you find a the Companies Act 1956 is mentioned somewhere. For example, in Income Tax Act, you will find when you go to definition of uh, for demerger, you know, exemptions for demerger under section 72, demerger, you 72A, I think, you will find they are referred to the old sections of the Companies Act, the uh, sections of the old Companies Act 1956 regarding amalgamation and all that. Now that's those sections are repealed. So then how do we understand this law will come to your aid? It will say straight away, don't worry. In case there is a reference to an old law, it is it will be deemed to be or treated as a reference to the corresponding new law. See how easily you know. So you 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 should not make fun of the parliament and income tax act and say, no, 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 what income tax act? You people don't know that companies act 2013 has come uh, like that. You cannot tell. If it is a reference to the 56 act, automatically it'll you have to refer to the corresponding provisions of the 13 Act. If such corresponding provisions are not there, interpret accordingly. But if corresponding provisions are there, apply accordingly. So see how, how this law is a very important law, which is why our institute, uh, Board of Studies, has correctly included this law in the syllabus for intermediate. So if once you know this, but I am taking one liberty with the content, which is I am not covering the whole thing. If you are keeping the Board of Studies material and referring many boring parts, I'll be skipping. If you still want to read, read it. Even in my slide, it will be there. It will be there in my slide. But uh, try to, if you want to read, read it. There is no need. What is important will be covered. Hmm? But everything will be there in the slide also. Is there in the Board of Studies material? I don't think it's as important. And we need to not. Some of it is not relevant. Today, the situations have changed. Geography has changed. History cannot change. History cannot change. Geography can change. Are you able to understand? How can history change? Yeah, history is what happened. That cannot change or be rewritten. Geography, yes, you can change. <laughs> so, am I correct or not? Our historical prime minister has changed the geography. Hmm? So, <clears throat> to place in one single statute 
different provisions as regards interpretation of words and legal principles which would otherwise have to be specified separately etc etc this law applies to all acts of the indian parliament can you imagine a law which is applicable to all acts <laughs> this law is applicable to all acts of parliament so long as they have been enacted by the indian parliament that is why they are called central act sorry they are called central act so long as they are a central act central act means enacted sorry central act enacted by act of indian parliament of course before 15th august sorry between 15th august and 26 sorry i said 51 this 26 january 50 sorry i am very very sorry that is we got our independence on 15th august 1947 we were independent country but for constitution had not come so how to elect members to the parliament etc etc was not known so till such time a dominion legislature was uh, there which was holding forth somebody has to do it now so elections have to be held ma and uh, those elected people only will go to parliament and adopt the constitution am i correct so during that period alone there was a dominion legislature so do you agree that this part is not relevant it's a history it's nice to know there was a dominion because why it's called dominion legislature because till 14th august 1947 midnight midnight 14th august 1947 we were a dominion of the british kingdom british empire we were a dominion we were subjects of george the 6th king george the 6th the father of the recently demised elizabeth the 2nd who lived a long life and who is now succeeded by king charles may he live long so king charles no take no luckily we are not the subjects of king charles or even queen elizabeth the 2nd we were not even the subjects of henry the 6th like george the 6th by the time george the 6th was the king who gave us the independence and uh, he I mean not that he gave the independence we we it was inevitable that he should do it and uh, so we ceased to be a dominion on 15th august 1947 and we got our own constitution on 26th january 1950 sorry okay so it then acts passed before the commencement of the constitution by the governor general in council or the governor general acting in the legislative capacity because there was a short duration when the governor general was there who sir uh, sri rajgopal acharya was the first governor general he acted in a legislative capacity normally president governor general is the equivalent of our current president so the governor general cannot pass laws so parliament will but till such time the parliament comes okay please understand there is no territorial extent which means to the whole of india in those days before uh, the constitution was amended we include kashmir okay as part of india in those days the laws most of the indian law will extend only to if it will extend everywhere over india except the state of jammu and kashmir jammu and kashmir had its own laws but the general clauses that was applicable even to those laws okay passed by the parliament of the separate parliament was there and they used to almost similar laws will be there Okay. No, no. All laws extend to the whole of India, including Jammu and Kashmir. Okay. Unless the context otherwise requires, the General Clauses Act, eighteen ninety-seven, shall subject any adaptation may be made therein under Articles three seventy-two apply for the interpretation of the Constitution as it applies for the interpretation. So, uh, this Act does not contain any indication as to territorial extent. It is deemed to apply wherever a central law is applicable, including Jammu and Kashmir. okay including the constitution can be interpreted using the general clauses act it is a very powerful law okay there are some preliminary portions which there as in every act there is a title short title long title extent we have already seen that now the definitions given in the general clauses act see normally there would be definitional sections in a law there will be usually section 2 when we when we discussed the companies act uh, 2013 we when where the our first uh, say lecture was on first series of lectures were on the preliminary where elaborately we discussed the definition section section 2 okay but those definitions were used uh, with regard to words used in the companies act 2013 so whenever you find a word in the companies act uh, 
you and you don't know what it is you go to the revenue section private company what is it you go there so most all other enactments the definitions are applicable to the words uh, used in that enactment sometimes if a word is not used in if not defined in that law but it is defined in a similar or other law then you can use that definition for example many uh, words in sebi act and uh, securities contract regulation act they will say these words have the same meaning as given in the companies act 2013 similarly companies act will refer to securities contract regulation act sometimes wherever it is convenient they will say refer to that definition that is enough even if they do not refer if these laws are similar a word is used here defined there you can take it definitions now suppose your word is not defined in this act that that act it is not defined in any similar law then you can look into the definition section of the general classes act which means the definitions we are going to see are universal definitions please be careful if a law is defining it differently for that law that definition will apply but if a law is silent then general then you can draw for reference to similar if that also fails then you can come to general class act if general class is act also definition is not there then and only then can you go for the dictionary meaning of course you can go for the dictionary meaning later on when you come to interpretation of statutes we will talk about dictionary meaning also so now we are going to see some words so for example the word affidavit if the word affidavit is used and not defined you have to come here only affidavit shall include affirmation and declaration in the case of i am not going to take you through the definitions not all important definitions i am going to take you okay where were very relevant it's a quite a long section and we are going to see quite a lot of important principles affidavit shall include affirmation and declaration in the case of persons by law section 2 i think i don't know yeah check up and tell you uh, section 2 i don't know seriously it's a good question i don't know some questions only rithraj is thinking it's not relevant that much i am sure i sure i think section 2 is rest extent and operation i think so extent and operation okay anyway don't worry you can also refer to just go to google and see na just go to google and see then i can't do because i'm teaching you go and see and tell me generally they are in two here they are in three okay. there's a lot of enactments is not rule that it should be in two hmm? some other law also it is in three i think consumer protection no consumer protection act is in two some other law also it is in three anyway doesn't matter it can be in any section usually it will be in the beginning hmm section 2 repealed gudiwada sai says thank you so nice of you see you people are all so intelligent i say you know so many things which i don't know okay now i know what is relevant to be known <laughs> that is the difference <laughs> are you able to understand what i'm saying what is relevant to be known i know what is not relevant i prefer not to know what do you think so from the exam point of view i will not remember unnecessary things i will remember those things that are important that is how you clear the exam not by worrying about the irrelevant but by knowing the relevant <laughs> so go breaking your head about small things you will not clear the exam but knowing the important topics you will clear the exam are you able to understand my approach there are many students who are so worried so this sections or that sections or should i read this or important or boss certain sections are not important if you still want to waste your time reading it read it don't come in the exam this this confidence sometimes when i tell na they will they not agree with me no okay read everything 1 to 100 you read is the right okay correct good divya kumari makes the point also very good my point is a broader issue my point is while reading studying for exam na law paper and all you should be choosy in your preparation you you should not give the same amount of time to all topics you should read all topics once once and try to mark them but some topics you should give more importance based on their regularity of question in the exam so on and so forth this was acknowledged even by the institute 
and they used to publish what is known as practice manual. So the idea is not to make fun. Yeah, you know, my intention is not to hurt you, but to make you understand why certain things are important. See, for example, when I um, when I wrote, uh, just give me one minute. Just give me one minute. There is a one important. Uh, one minute. Sorry, I should not be doing this, but I'm doing it. See. Okay, now we'll take this up later. In fact, today you are in for a treat. Uh, after at around 8 o'clock, I will stop my lecture. Thereafter, you are going to have two uh, board of studies faculty uh, who will answer all your general questions. So many questions you are asking, you know. This one, how to do, sir? Should I do this? Should I remember? Or oh, if I'm a Hindi medium, should I? How much English can I use? All the questions will be answered today. You, you are by two excellent, uh, uh, you know, persons from the board of studies, whom I know very well, and they are really great, uh, very very studious people. So they will, they are very knowledgeable people. They will come, so you can ask all sorts of questions. So don't, uh, yeah, yeah, I know part you are expressing. So. Uh, so don't keep all your doubts ready and bombard them, including you ask, Srikanth is telling only important topics to be studied. Do you agree and all? They, I don't know what they will say. But one thing I will tell you, I cleared exam by getting rank only by that method. That I can tell you. By not by reading from top to bottom or knowing everything, but by knowing those things which are important. In fact, when I wrote my final exam, the book final exam, my book on corporate and allied laws for final, went into seven editions and it was uh, very popular among students. Not because it was very intelligent, written by an intelligent person, but because every topic I used to analyze into subtopic and for every subtopic, the question asked in the exam, I will cover. I was the first person who did it. My first edition book had that method, which was seen as some sort of a big thing because I was giving, so that student will know then and there a topic whether the question has come or not in the exam. So he can decide whether to you know concentrate or not and things like that. So that method was used. That then all other authors started doing it. <laughs> and then he also so I used to do it and all that. I used to give all the answers and all that. Anyway, so then Board of Studies itself came out with what is known as a practice manual, <laughs> analyzing topic wise questions. So on and so forth. To show you that you have to do some amount of research on. Which topic questions are coming? Which topic questions are not coming? Within the topics and amongst the topics, which is, if you do that type of a study a little bit, your ability to, you know, sort of prepare the exam will improve rather than blindly studying everything. Or, uh, hmm? okay, so yeah, to a great extent, 80 20. I wouldn't say 80 20, that's too much. So my, my philosophy was 60% of the syllabus. You should know 100% well. That was my philosophy. Syllabus. But then which 60%? That is the real challenge. Knowing which 60%. So, see, what I'm now revealing to you is actually a secret. I should not even be sharing this with you. No, especially in this platform. But I'm giving it because you are my beloved students. I'm telling the secret to you. If you want to do it, do it. Read the entire material. Read everything. Go, go, go. Okay. That is your choice. Okay, read all the topics, don't miss out anything, read every bit and know it well, maybe the exam, you'll pass the exam, I don't know. <laughs> because people who've done that have failed. Whereas this method adopted, rank holder or first attempt pass like that. Chal. Affidavit shall, now we'll go back to our topic. Affidavit shall include affirmation and declaration in the case of persons by law allowed to affirm or declare instead of swearing. See, swear means you call, you take an oath. Okay. Certain religions, they 
say swearing or taking oath is against God. Swearing, don't swear. For example, uh, you shouldn't, in other words, in especially in Catholic and especially in Christianity, we say, don't take the name of God in vain. For some normal material thing, don't take the name of God in vain. Like that. So the, such people will not swear. They will only affirm and declare. Okay. Affirm means I state that this is true and declare. So that is the point. Affirmation and declaration. In case of persons allowed affirmation and affirmation. So affidavit is a written statement confirmed by oath or affirmation. See, so some, some people may not take, you should not take the name of God in vain by, for some religions. In Hinduism, no such condition. We can swear. So then they will take oath. So oath shall include affirmation and declaration in the case of persons by law allows to affirm or declare instead of swearing. Swear, okay, with its grammatical variation shall include affirming and declaring in the case, so swear is a bigger term. Okay. So the terms affidavit, oath, and swear have the same definition, except that those who can swear can swear on God. Whereas when you're affirming or confirming or declaring, you're not swearing on God. That's the difference. Swear is a powerful term. Swear. Once you say swear, you're taking the name of God. Whereas uh, if you say oath or if you're saying I'm only affirming and declaring, nothing wrong. You can affirm and declare. Similarly, there may be people who are atheists who don't believe in God. Such people also will affirm and declare. They will not, they cannot swear. Okay, but those who can swear, can swear. If you know, there is a swearing in ceremony. The God, the chief minister or prime minister is sworn. Swearing means what? He swears upon God. He takes his oath. That's called oath. Okay. Idea is, if when a person makes a statement under oath, he will not tell the lie. When you take a statement under oath or you swear, either by taking the name of God or by affirming and declaring, whatever you do, when you do it, you are not supposed to go against what you told and you are not supposed to tell a lie. Okay, that is the point. Which is why when a, when a search operation is going on, they will ask the people who are there to give a sworn statement. The reason it's called a sworn statement is because once the statement is given, they cannot go back on it because it is given under oath. So first they will take an oath. I hereby swear and declare or hereby affirm and can declare that what I am stating is the truth, true to the best of my knowledge and belief. Okay. And then they, even any form like the income tax form and all will have something called verification at the bottom. The verification is nothing but an affidavit. Meaning, it's a it's an affirmation and confirmation or oath. What I have stated in the form above is true, to the best of my knowledge and belief. Like that. Even when you are making a petition to the company law board, tribunal, court, etc., after the entire petition is over, finally you will have a verification where you say, "I so and so, son of so and so, do make the above statements um, and state that and affirm and state that or swear that they are true to the best of my knowledge and belief." See, they use the word knowledge and belief. Now you have to be very careful. What is knowledge? What is belief? So whatever you know for a fact is the knowledge. What you have been told and you accept, I believe, is the belief. So slight difference. Knowledge and belief. I may have belief, I may have knowledge. Okay? So belief is also allowed. I believe so. That's all. Okay? But it may not be. I, I, but I know is different. When I say I have knowledge, it means I saw. Like that. Okay? See, for example... I am certifying the uh, stock. Now, all said and done, it cannot be knowledge. Yeah? I don't go and see that stock. Uh, I, I, I did calculations. I did a test checking. I verified the books. And by and large, the probabilities of the case, I satisfied myself. And I got documentary evidence to prove it. I said, stock is so much. Knowledge and belief. That is where the belief will come. Government shall include both the state, uh, central and state government. The word government will include central and state government. So, how to understand which government? Only according to the context. Okay. And the word government, whether it's a state or central, it consists of three wings. The legislature, executive and judiciary. But in a narrow sense, when it is used in the law, normally government includes the legislature, executive and judiciary. But when, it, when the word government is used in a law, it means the executive only. Meaning, 
when you use the word central government in the companies act we always mean the ministry of corporate affairs not the parliament of india or the supreme court they are judiciary and legislature we always mean the ministry of corporate affairs are you able to understand the, the respect to ministry in the foreign contribution regulation act the word central government in ministry of home affairs and so on and so forth okay the in case before the commencement of the constitution governor general in council i think this is not relevant what do you say if you waste your time reading it you are wasting your time well this this itself is no not that we are now in 2023 ad as somebody was pointed out 75 years have gone from the date of uh, independence so don't waste your time on this hmm? constitutional skipping commencement means with reference to an act or regulation the day on which the act or regulation comes into force okay how it is done first you have to be pass it in parliament then you have to get the acquiescence the consent of the president then it has to be notified in the gazette merely notified as a law then there will be an effective date in that notification only from that date it will become effective or it may say this and uh, this act or this summit this act will become effective from the day mentioned by the central government then there should be another notification the official gets said for notifying it as effective only from that day that law will become effective are you able to understand first step passing present of president nothing happens the law is not applicable to you and me it has to be published in the official gazette published then also nothing happens i will see date of in the usually it will be there in the first section itself extend an operation then commencement commencement they will say the act will commence from so and so date or if no date is mentioned the act will commence from such dates as may be specified by the central government from time to time then they will simply keep it and wait because i have to wait for another notification which will say this law is now effective or this section of this law is now effective the companies act 2013 was passed in 2013 no doubt but it came into effect in piecemeal piecemeal it came into effect so till 17 it was coming to effect many sections were not effect till such time the old law will be there whether the old law or new law people were running around like headless chicken finally they notified all the sections and rules and all so on and so forth now so document any substance upon which any matter is written or expressed by means of letters or figures for recording that matter Uh, see, Mekala is a brilliant man, according to me. This brilliance will be known not here, but in the Indian Contract Act, where they will say an offer, a communication offer. They will say when it comes to the knowledge of the person to whom is made, uh, comes to the knowledge. You will say is very, very important. Okay, and uh, so any method of communication he is saying is okay. written or expressed okay book uh, file painting inscription even computer files are documents but specifically currency notes are removed they are not documents they are currency notes they are not documents okay so when when you ask for documentary evidence you are asking for something which is written or expressed by means of letters or figures opposite of document is any oral statement see sometimes client will say Mr. Sri Khan, uh, what I'm saying is true, sir. Totally agree with you, sir. Whatever you say, or the telephone you are telling, I'm very happy. But uh, just to put it in an email and send it to me, that becomes a document. Tomorrow, in an audit, when the audit is being reviewed, how did you know that uh, this was there? See, he has told me. How do you know he told you? Mail. There after I'll verify. See, don't think that I'm going to rely on a statement. But a statement made orally is not enough. it has to be in writing on a document okay that is why in audit documentary evidence becomes very very important if you do not have documentary evidence you can only talk you can talk i can talk everybody can talk not talk you talk i talk everybody talk talk you need document please remember as a future member of the institute please create or ensure that there is when i say create don't get me otherwise please ensure 
that there is a documentary evidence in support of whatever action you are taking. Means an email. Nowadays, we don't get signed letters. No need. Email. WhatsApp message? No. No, not allowed. WhatsApp message? No. Okay? It is a, a email allowed. Because under the Indian Information Technology Act also, electronic mail is acceptable as evidence under any law. Email is okay. Email is as good as documented. In fact, better than documented. Itself. Official gazette. We've already heard this term in the Companies Act. So, this act defines it. In the Companies Act, they will not define official gazette, gazette and all. Why? Because it is defined here. So, they say official gazette or gazette shall mean. See, Mr. Srinivasan and all should not get angry with me. So, three subsection 13, suddenly you are going to 18, suddenly you are going to 39. Like that, you should not take me, you should not trouble me. If you despair in the material, you read. But if I teach it, it will take two sessions. Waste. And there will be no addition to your uh, ability to get more marks in the exam because of that. There will be no reduction or impairment in your uh, score. Don't worry about that. Okay. Why I am telling Mr. Srinivasan? Because he keeps track of uh, how many sections I am covering, whether uh, uh, he audits every section, whether I have covered or not like that. Okay. Don't worry. But this is what is important is being covered. What is skipped is skipped. To use your own words, they, they are being skipped. Okay. For with, with valid reason, I'm skipping because the weightage for this topic itself is very less. Out of that, only some selected portions are being questioned. So kindly read that alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, Ritraj, <laughs> currency notes are not documented, yeah, whether Indian currency or foreign currency. See, again, your argument in what way it helps you in writing the examination you decide. Sometimes, you know, waste of time. All documents, see, they're trying to say currency notes are not documents. That's all. Sorry. Sorry. They say we use the word Indian currency notes. Generally, all currency notes are not documents. It's not as if Euro is a document. Pass. Yes. For sake of clarity, they are giving it. Sorry, when I'm using the tone like this, no, don't think that I'm making fun of you or anything like that. Sometimes I'm surprised the way students are using their intelligence for unnecessary questions. When what is important, you should remember, hmm? which is document. And the most important thing I stated was ensure that you have documentary evidence. That is important. Remember that. I can give you 100 examples from my life where because I had documentary proof, I could prove myself and come out of a difficult situation. If I had not had documentary evidence, it would be my word against somebody else. Word is good, but the word alone is not enough. And there will be a small doubt in the mind of that other person. Never. You should give document. See, this is the proof. What I am telling is the truth. That should be there. That is why I am saying. Okay. So, the Gazette of India is a public journal. And it is an authorized legal document. That becomes a proof. Suppose a director has uh, quit. And you want to be sure that the world should know that he has quit, then you can release an advertisement in the official gazette. Once it is published in the official gazette, it becomes what? It becomes you know it. When you file a document to the register of companies, what happens? Constructive notice. Anything published in the official gazette is constructive notice. Every citizen of this country is expected to have read it, deemed to have read it. So, though you have not read the official gazette, you are deemed to have read it. No, sir. To answer your question very clearly, Mr. Ja, videos are not included in uh, document. Videos are not included. Good question. I appreciate your question. Photographs and videos are not included in only emails. If sent under a proper crypto system, will be a video. It should be sent in a secured manner when it is evidence. Other than that, means the video, WhatsApp. That's why I said WhatsApp messages are also not evidence, documentary evidence. Use it as a, a sort of a corroborative evidence and all that, but sorry, it cannot be taken. But email sent from a proper server through the internet protocol and received by the other server and confirmed and the time is noted now, becomes a valid 
you can use it in a commercial display but videos are not allowed and very difficult videos are not allowed videos are not allowed. even they they allowed as corroborative evidence but can be questioned very difficult to prove a case with video see that's why you know many of the, many of these videos it's very difficult to prove it is like see when i am producing a document signed by mr a he can always refute and say i didn't sign it it's a forgery then it has to go for handwriting verification and all that so when you bring a video and say srikanth was seen like this uh, take a photo and show we will see i will get my own experts to see whether that video is actual real video or you just casually took it or you took it somebody else and then put my face on it i don't know so no yeah. very good very good no no enjoy the lecture you can also see sometimes your questions are relevant but sometimes you know i think your questions are relevant more than your questions rudra ji your supportive comments are very useful to me when uh, i am unable to give a reply you are able to give a reply i am very thankful to you for that many of you not only you okay see ramja is asking a question it is a relevant question because uh, whether video is there video is not allowed videos are dangerous evidence Okay, videos are dangerous evidence. If you want video to be evidence, you know what you should do. Police and all will do it. You know what they will do? They will take it in a place. They will record the date, time. Then it is almost like a sworn statement given in front of the camera. So they will ask, uh, well, uh, "Please confirm the date and time." You will confirm the date. Then, please confirm that you are not being coerced into making these statements. All that he has to confirm. then you are telling out so instead of writing he will tell into the camera that's all that is allowed as evidence where a police officer is present independent witness is present in their presence this is uh, being a so that is all but other than that videos are not simply you can't take some video and tell this is a proof again and again i'm saying this could be a corroborative evidence corroborative means it is not a main evidence this cannot prove but when other proof is that this acts as an additional proof If you have no other proof, this alone cannot become the proof. This could be corroborated, which is why even lawyers will hesitate to bring video as a evidence. Though today in many movies you will find they will show videos and all that. If if I am the advocate for the other party, you know, I'll immediately say objection, Your Honor. Please ensure that the video is verified and then play it. E even playing it will prejudice my client. no even if i'm playing it it will prejudice my client it because anything done in open court becomes public knowledge so even i will object to the playing of the video until it has been seen by the judge in camera in his sky in his chamber and it has been uh, verified by a independent party very thoroughly and uh, proved by an expert that this is a video valid video and not a speak up yeah so enactment what we have been asking this now what is an enactment a regulation and any regulation of madras bam bam bengal madras or bombay code okay the bengal madras and bombay are not the bengal is no kolkata madras is no chennai bombay is no mumbai <laughs> and delhi is not even here can you see that <laughs> these were the three british presidencies bengal presidency madras presidency and bombay presidency delhi is delhi was was when this law was there delhi was not at the full seat of british empire okay but of course the last british the last mogal emperor had gone but britain was still being ruled from kolkata in madras bombay itself was not a head kolkata was the head office madras was the next <laughs> okay then delhi became the then uh, delhi became okay delhi became the top of the and there after only delhi okay now so enactment means any any act of parliament or a state legislature is an enactment any since act enactment is defined to include any provision of an act okay section 6 talks about the effect of repeal even a single provision of an act can be repealed means of repealing the entire act they can repeal a provision of the act okay so we have 100% i have skipped many subsections okay knowingly but i'm covering important now we come to financial year please note financial year means the year commencing on the first day of april and ending on the 31st day of march 
financial year. Year. Yeah, they will not ask you definition in exam. They will ask you problem question based on your understanding of the definition. Which is why I'm skipping many purely theoretical definitions and irrelevant definitions. Where a definition, they can ask you a question based on interpretation, I'm covering that. So they will know, ask, they will expect you to know and apply in a situation. Okay. So that type of definition is important and we are doing it. So don't have to memorize these definitions. Just know them. So we already know this. I've been repeating it again and again. Whenever you saw, for, for example, an annual general meeting shall be held in every year. Here, what is it financial year? No. Wherever the word year only is used, it means calendar year. January to December. 1st of January to 31st of December. What is the calendar year? It is called calendar year because the, this is the Gregorian calendar. British calendar is called the Gregorian calendar, which was Roman Emperor Gregory. It was a Christian emperor, emperor. He bought it and then it was adopted by the British. Okay. So Gregorian calendar. He was a Christian king rule, ruling under the Roman Catholic Church. He bought the ca calendar called the Gregorian calendar, which begins in January and goes to December. Okay. Goes to December. Right. The, the Romans, before the Romans, they, they did not have 12 months. Thereafter, they, they introduced two, three new months in the middle. <laughs> which was uh, your uh, which, which is why you know see December is the 12th month December is the 12th month have you ever wondered why the 12th month is called December see December is 10 November is 9 October is 8 am I correct September, uh, September is 7 so it should be December should be 12 now <laughs> but uh, it is that because they, they had only 10. Then when Julius Caesar came, he introduced one more month, Julia, July. <laughs> and Augustus came and he introduced one more month, August. And therefore, they made then they made it into the 12 months. Then this became the Gregorian calendar. Uh, after adjusting for all the leap years and all that, they corrected it and they had one year, which was a confusing year. Thereafter, you have your 365 days, 12 months. And in the leap year alone, you have your one extra day to compensate. And so you have 366 days in leap year. So this was done by uh, a Roman emperor called Roman Catholic emperor called Gregory. Gregory the church called Gregorian. For information, more than anything else. Uh, so calendar year is this. So just remember. So whenever you read an enactment, check. Are they using financial year, assessment year, previous year? Then they will be defined. But if they are using the word financial year, remember it is always beginning on first day of April and ending on 31st March. Calendar, if they use the word self year, nothing beginning, no prefix, then calendar year. So, okay. Month shall mean a month reckoning according to the British calendar, which is basically the Gregorian calendar, British calendar, okay, which is nothing but 1st January to 31st December. So, you cannot take, no, 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 month of, uh, I will take the month of Pushya, no, I will take the Zaka era, sorry, the Zaka era cannot be taken, though the Indian government uses the Saka era. As an additional method of reckoning, um, you know, a date. So we have two dates. If you see any document in the government, you will find two dates. One is the British calendar date and the other would be the Saka era. Okay. So, sorry, thank you. So, the of course, Saka was a great king called Shalivahana. Shalivahana was the king who bought in his period, the year when Shalivahana was born became the Saka era. If you are going to talk about river of knowledge, my dear friend, Shalivahana was a river of knowledge. And he was such a brilliant king. When Shalivahana came, it, that era became known as Saka era, which was used for, for a long time during Gupta period and more, even Mauryan Empire. And all. Then when the British came, they destroyed all that and they took up uh, their calendar. We also adopted their calendar. Then again, when Britain, India got independence, we went back to the Saka era also, which is still being used, Saka era. Okay, here we all know that we saw that. So now we go to. No, 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 no. Nenanji, that is in Companies Act, financial year means the big. Yeah, same thing, boss. Financial year begins on the 1st of April, ma. Ends on the 31st day of March every year. Sir, here we are seeing for, it commencing on the 1st day of April. 
and ending on the 31st day of March. Okay, so same only. The same year, what we call the financial year in the Companies Act is the same. First, it begins on the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, and ends on the 31st day of March, which is fast approaching. Okay, clear, Mr. Desai? Okay, now we come to one word, which is used here, the word good faith. Now, I don't know if you have studied Negotiable Instruments Act. I think Negotiable Instrument Act has been taken out of your syllabus, no problem. If you remember your uh, uh, Contract Act or Sale of Goods Act, there you will come across sale by non-owner. Sale by non-owner. In that sale by non-owner, the nemo dat quad non-habit. You cannot give a better title. That, you cannot give that which you do not possess. So you cannot give a better. I cannot give a better title than what I have. So a non-owner cannot communicate title. Exceptions are there. So nemo dat quad non-habit. And one of the exceptions is where a sale happens. For example, a, a goods are transferred under a, a you know, Contract which can be resigned. There is under a, um, what is that, um, uh, voidable contract. When when uh, when goods, see, I, I practice fraud on you and I acquire goods. I give you a bugged, bogus check or I give you a false promise and I say I will pay and I go, I cheat you and I obtain goods. No, these goods do not belong to me because I have obtained them under fraud. I have obtained them under fraud. But you have not discovered the fraud, you have not objected to it. So long as you have not done that, the contract is only voidable. Only when you, as the other party to the contract, whose consent was so obtained, you say the contract is void, it will become void. Till such time you say that it is only voidable. So during the voidability of the contract, if any transaction is happening, so I take these goods and they sell it to a third party. Now the third party gets it from me for consideration in good faith. Are you able to see where I am connecting it? So the third party gets it from me for good consideration. He pays me good money and he gets it from me in good faith. What is good faith? It was done, in fact, done honestly. Whether it is done negligently or not, maybe that guy should have made inquiries. Where did you get this goods from? Like that, he does. But still, he acted honestly. He truly believed me to be the owner. And he honestly thought, I can transfer title. And he paid me consideration. And he took the goods. Now the goods belong to him. Ownership in goods. Though normally the owner, non-owner cannot give title, during the voidable period of a voidable agreement, voidable contract, it can be done. Provided the other party gets it for consideration in good faith. Of course, without knowledge of the incapacity or without knowledge of the defect in my title. Sure. So, Good faith means anything which is done honestly. Have you understood? Anything done with due care and attention, which is not mal fide, is presumed to have been done in good faith. The term good faith has been defined differently in different enactments. But basically, this is what good faith means. So this good faith becomes very, very important. Okay. Uberime fide is different, Rudraj, because you know that one don't use it. Uberime fide is different. Uberime fide is where in certain contracts, there is a duty upon one party to reveal all the defects to the other party or to be totally truthful to the other party. Failure to reveal all the defects would make the contract void. That is called uberi may fide. Contract of insurance is a contract of uberi may fide. Where I am going to insure my car, I should inform the insurer about all defects in that car. So I am bound, I am on a duty bound to prove to him. So I am put on uberi may fide. That's what Uberi Mefide means. Okay. Marriage is the contract of utmost good faith. I don't think so. I'm sorry. It, first of all, marriage is not a contract. It is not a legal relationship. <laughs> so whether Uberi Mefide or not, I don't know. Okay. It is not a contract. I have not entered into any contract with my wife. She is a human being. I'm a human being. We decided to be together, make children, and bring them up. So, it is a relationship. It is not a contract. Please do not use the word contract in connection with marriage, thereby making it some sort of a mercenary or pecuniary uh, uh, arrangement. It is much more than that. It is a very, very pure and possibly one of the most important relationships in a person's life. And of course, 
Some marriages are good, some marriages are bad. Well, that is okay. But it works, it doesn't work. But basically, it is not a contract. You don't enter a Unless, even in US, marriage is not a contract. But after marriage, or before, sorry, before marriage, the two persons will enter into a contract. It is called pre-nuptial contract. There is no nuptial contract. It's called pre-nuptial. Where before marriage, they will enter into a contract by which they will agree that in case there is a divorce, the husband or wife, as the case may be, will only get a fixed amount and will not get a share in the assets of the other party. So that is called prenuptial. Even there, even the Americans with all their mercenary behavior are unable to make contract of out of a marriage. They can't nuptial. Marriage cannot be a contract. Please understand. Okay. You might call it a contract, but it is only a social contract. Okay. Wife has no duties. Husband has no duties. If they want to live together, they live together. Okay. Of course, common law, there are certain duties for taking care of your thing, but that again is enactment. Not it is statutory. Please understand. There is a duty for a husband to maintain his wife. Or but that is a as per the uh, what shall I, I think it's as per the Hindu Marriage Act. Uh, no, Special Marriages Act. It, your, your duty to maintain. But based on which only in divorce they will claim alimony. Okay. But not based on a contract between the two. Please understand. I'm, I'm, I would like to make this point very. Nuptial means anything connected with marriage is called nuptial. It is the spelling N U P T I A L. Nuptial. Anything connected with marriage is called nuptial. Okay. Okay, so the term good faith has been defined differently in different enactments. The definition does not apply to the enactment which contains a special definition of the term good faith. Where good faith has been defined, that definition will apply. But where good faith is not defined, it has the meaning given here in 322. Okay. So this is a very thing. Idea is honesty. I have honestly made. See, this is where there will be many jewelers and pawnbrokers between you and me who are normally known to take stolen goods. Now, such people cannot claim good faith. Because they are they everybody knows that you take stolen goods. So you knew that. that so the person acting should have done in with honesty. And uh, an honest purchase made carelessly without proper inquiries cannot be said to have been in good faith. Okay, please note. The good, there should be due care and attention, not manner of day. Due care and attention should be taken. So the very important point you say I have highlighted also. Am I correct? What do you understand by the term good faith? Explain it as per the provisions of the General Class Act, 1897. Mr. X purchased a wife watch from Mr. Y carelessly and without proper inquiry, whether the purchase could be made in good faith. So the important words is carelessly and without proper inquiry. So under the General Classes Act, if an act is done care, without due care and attention, then it is not a good faith. That's what I'm understanding. Okay. So therefore, not an honest purchase made carelessly without making proper inquiries cannot be said to have been made in good faith. Okay. So as to convey good faith. Right. Mrs. K went to a jewelry shop to purchase diamond ornaments. The owners of the jewelry shop are notorious and indulging in smuggling activities. <laughs> it's a well-known smuggling shop. Mrs. K purchased diamond ornaments honestly without making proper inquiries. Now, see, <laughs> she should have found out who these people are. Okay? So the owners are notorious. Notorious means well-known in a bad way. Notorious, see, the word notorious means well-known but in a bad way. Opposite of famous, well-known, well-known, but not in a good way, well-known in a bad way, well-known in a bad way, whereas famous is well-known in a good way. Okay, so okay, the point is, suppose the true owner claims, K has to give up her, give up the jewelry, diamond ornament. Then what will happen to her? The money paid by her to this jewelry shop. She has to file a suit against the jewelry shop. See, she cannot refuse to de deliver title to the, deliver the diamond ornaments to the true owner. Which is again basically an amount at quad out of it. Okay. So definition of good faith is given here.
we are one 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 point i am understanding is due enquiry should be made and due care should be taken that, that is my understanding in sir due care due care should be taken if due care is not taken then it is not good faith so an, an honest purchase made carelessly without making proper inquiries not in good faith okay word immovable property is also defined here hmm? very important definition immovable property shall include land benefits arising out of land things attached to the earth or permanently fastened to anything attached to the earth the word immovable property is defined inclusively it is not exhaustive there could be other things also which are immovable property examples are given which is land benefits to arise out of land so if you go to the sale of goods act you will find exemption is there growing crops so anything which will arise out of land things attached to the earth like trees etc permanently fastened to anything attached to the earth so please understand where in any enactment the definition of immovable property is in the negative and not exhaustive then the definition as given in the general clause act will apply to the expression given in that but where they are giving an exhaustive definition where for example in the transfer of property act immovable property is exhaustively defined and you cannot escape there building is included building is included in immovable property okay here they are saying anything permanently fastened to anything attached to the earth is not is an immovable property okay so x owned a land with tamarind trees he sold his land and the timber obtained after cutting the 50 trees x wants to know whether the sale of timber tantamount to sale of immovable property please note with reference to general clauses act land is immovable property timber cannot be immovable property since the same are not attached to the earth okay so the timber will not be immovable property anything which is attached to the earth okay only will be immovable property. this is not attached it can be removed okay a building with a foundation attached to the earth immovable property okay machinery which is permanently fastened to anything attached to the earth please be careful machinery which is permanently fastened immovable property whereas any machinery which is not attached to the earth movable property okay if you have any doubt you can ask me okay three fruits are definitely not immovable property fruits are definitely not immovable property tree is also not immovable property growing crops if you find it will though it is exempted under goods sale of goods act from the definition of goods it is a movable property growing crops are movable property but not goods definition of goods it won't come but movable property okay so this is the point it so happens recently i visited one of my i purchased a small half acre of land in um, in a small village near in south india in, near to me is chennai you may not even know it this is a small village called vallipuram near a place called thirukkalukundram which itself you may not know i purchased it when i was 27 years old i am now 58 the idea was that i will build a small temple there for hanuman ji which i am a devotee of hanuman sir one plate those on the other time my when my father asked why you are buying such a dear remote village i told him see when i am older I, the price may go up and i may not have the intention to buy now i want to buy why keep it so i recently went to visit that land one of my client is living in that village he told me sir i am living in that village so i went to see the land near the temple when i went there then i see when i bought it in when i was 27 almost 25 26 years ago the land was vacant <laughs> some local person has planted a tamarind tree there and that tamarind tree has grown so huge so when i came to view the land she came running and she said sir i am only taking care of the tamarind tree and uh, she said uh, uh, the land belongs to you tamarind tree belongs to me <laughs> i said definitely this tamarind tree belongs to you okay 
she was so happy you know so innocently she was saying land is yours free is mine absolutely correct even under the general class is that she is correct it's not part of the immovable property i want the immovable property she wants the tamarind tree i said you take it she was so happy when i told her it's what the tamarind tree will get if she cuts it and says it she will get something out of it poor lady let her take it what is there there after she will see i told her you be here and take care of the temple for me later on definitely i'll be there for you sir don't worry see money can come and go my dear friends money can come and go but uh, um, people will not come and go people are more important if you give more value to money then people will go away <laughs> but if you give more value to people now people will be there money also will be there believe me when i say this people will be there money also will be there okay and in the long run if no people are there what is use of all our money okay think like that then automatically you will make a lot of money and you will have a lot of people with you who will be loving you who will be uh, attached to you who will be with you like that finally you will realize a time when nothing is important and then you will go away that time will come till then you need people don't think that you can be without people no he sold his land and the timber and all we got it immovable property means other than immovable property okay etc so okay so now goods in goods if it now you go to goods property they'll say every type of mobile property rather than currency growing crops and fractionable debt like that but they are mobile property even electricity is a mobile property growing crops are mobile property but for the definition of goods under the sale of goods that they will exempt it offense we have seen this word many many times in the companies act called offense where uh, offense shall mean any act or omission consciously doing something that is wrong not doing something that has to be done both are offense act or omission that act or omission is made punishable by any law for the time being in force so many of you have asked me what is an offense what is an offense i'll tell you any act or omission made punishable by punishment can be by way of fine or imprisonment okay so that is what they say so it can be a fine or it can be imprisonment so again imprisonment is defined in the indian penal code. so imprisonment means as defined in the indian penal code again drafted by mekale only which is still there the indian penal code no major amendment no major amendment see my guru uh, professor k sandraman used to say many of the new laws now including eep teasing and all they have bought now that is already covered with indian <laughs> Nagale had already guessed, but still they wanted to have a new law called PETA, Prevention of Youth Teasing Act. In Tamil Nadu, we have. I don't know whether it's there in India, Central Act, but it is a state act. There is a Prevention of Youth Teasing Act in Tamil Nadu. We have that act. So, uh, Section fifty-three talks about imprisonment. Two descriptions: rigorous imprisonment. Simple. Okay. In the Companies Act, always reference to imprisonment is simple imprisonment, not rigorous. Okay. Good person. We know any company, association, body of individuals, and all that. So, but if any law is defining a word, this definition will not be applicable. Only in a law which is not defining, it will include. Again, they use the word include. That means what? Individual is already covered. Firm is already covered. Other than that, they are saying it will include company, association, body of individuals, whether incorporated or not. Section means section of the act. Subsection means subsection of the section in which the word occurs. Is there an idea? Is where do you get the word section from, sir? If you ask me, general classes act. Where do you get the word subsection, sir? General classes act. The word writing shall be construed as including references. See, this is where you will see Macaulay in action. writing shall be construed as a references to printing lithography photography and other modes by this other modes he has put everything there of representing or reproducing words in visible forms and now you are now looking at a powerpoint presentation shown by me this powerpoint presentation is appearing on your screen am i correct is it writing it is because it is a er Met mode of representing or reproducing words in visible form. He didn't say printed on paper <laughs> or written on paper. <laughs> representing or reproducing words in visible form. For example, I am writing this now. 
writing <laughs> i am representing words in visible form got it so and that way i, I am a great fan of lord mekalo do of course do 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 before you jump and start strangling me i will agree he was a rascal he only created our problem all the problems are dependent in india only reason is our lord mekale who were who only created a schooling system which was fit for bringing clerks and not for creating human beings we should have changed the system long long ago we did not change it we continued that system that is our problem but mekale guilty fine and penalty sir penalty means punishment sir penalty means punishments a oh, madam sorry vaishali madam penalty means penalty means punishment okay it could be fine or imprisonment so fine. penalty is a bigger term that penalty penalty means any punishment or uh, for doing something wrong penalty even in a uh, football match you, know, you have penalty so when you do something wrong you have to suffer some consequences that is called penalty usually it will be fine it could be imprisonment also so there there is a difference in the sense penalty is a bigger term in which fine is included imprisonment is also in see in a game of football penalty is the uh, this team will the other team will get a chance to score they they can kick off from the line and directly go for a goal so that that benefit they will get which is a penalty for this team so these are just broad indications that uh, the definitions of section 3 central government central act gazette government these definitions shall apply unless there is anything repugnant in the subject or context to all indian laws please understand it will apply to both central acts and also to state acts only these words okay so nothing great i'm not going to waste your time on this because this is a very old one okay coming into operation of enactment Hmm? Where any central act has not specifically mentioned a particular date, it shall be implemented on the day in which it receives the assent of the Governor General. In case of central acts made before the Council of the Indian Constitution, and of President in the case of Act of Parliament. Okay, but in addition to that, it has to be notified in the Gazette and the date of notification. So, central act has not specifically mentioned. Every cent, you, you don't believe me? You go and see any central act. First section, they will say extent and operation. Okay, first they say this act will apply to the whole of India, whatever. Then one subsection one, a one subsection two, it will be the act shall come into effect from the date notified by the central government. Once it says that, then president's assent is not enough. It has to be notified. Sometimes they will say this act will come into effect from the first day of April twenty twenty four. Then that is the date. if nothing is mentioned then it will come into effect on the day when the president gives his assent okay it it see before the see when this law was passed there was no president <laughs> there was no governor there was a governor general there was a governor general okay right and we continue to have one more governor general who is our raja ji sir so rajagopal acharya sir c rajagopal acharya he was the last governor general first governor general indian governor general last governor general of india thereafter we had president only okay so thereafter president are able to understand the point normally the act date will be mentioned if not they will say it will come into effect when notified by the central government so the central government will notify it. you have to wait for the notification if nothing is mentioned which is rare you will not find an act of parliament which has does not mention either the date or that it will come into effect from the date notified by the central government if that is not there then it will come into effect on the day when it receives the assent of the president you got it with regard to act of parliament with regard to state it will come into effect when it receives the assent of the governor of that state this is why in many cases the governor of the state Will not give assent. <laughs> he will hold that. He will hold the law and sit, looking at the chief minister like that. They will be fighting with each other for no reason at all. Governor and chief minister will be fighting because simple. Who is the boss of the governor? Think and tell. Technically, president. Okay, but 
theoretically president really prime minister so and especially if he is the ruling party ka governor he will be simply waiting for the call to come only when the call comes from his boss he will take, 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 take that file and then he will be watching waiting and watching he will be giving bullshit uh, reasons from his office will go governor is busy governor is not able to see the file today day after tomorrow he will see it please go please go like that you know i mean this is the reality don't mistake me okay but if he is uh, very close and everything is the ruling is, ah, come on bring it bring it take it go 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 it is hasn't given go 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 like that any anyway. and i'm not trying to make a mockery of the democratic process is there that we have kept these checks and balances see you broader point is there see for information on television channel they had an interview I means sort of they had a program on parle on uh, constitution of india the person running that program happened to be my student from ac institute a very good gentleman an advocate very senior advocate he called me said sri gan sir i want you to come on that show and talk about constitution he asked him babu i am a charter accountant what do i know about it he no sir you come so he gave me syllabus also i was supposed to speak on that part of the constitution which deals with the present of india so i did an extensive study i referred to two volumes of uh, treatises on constitution my son is an advocate i took lecture from him i i i for 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 45 minutes he taught me what is the role of the president and all everything i learned and uh, prepared myself for different different types of questions finally went and uh, then only i realized that the president's role is very peculiar in india and why is there at all a president in india you know we see our president is not the same as us president us president has absolute power the us president is equal to our prime minister why in india we have like this you know because we adopted the british constitution where there is a king in india we don't have king. so instead they bought the president so they, so that is the role this man plays the figurehead head figure head role where he is to be these we could have done away with it dr b r ambedkar could simply have thrown away the british uh, constitution and taken the american constitution or the french constitution in which case we would have only one president who would be elected by the people <laughs> anyway not for me to comment so which means the president's role is very peculiar role in this country he has no major but he is the head of the state the prime minister has to take his advice and the minister to take his advice but i'm sorry they are bound they are they are subservient to him but he has to do anything only after consulting the prime minister and his ministers see how locked it is it is locked so that president definitely has power but he cannot exercise it unless he is after without consulting with the prime minister and his ministers prime minister has lot of power but he is subject he is subject to the president they have put a lock but between the two prime minister being the representative of the majority party in the parliament is more power because technically the president is elected by the electoral college wherein this man has majority so it's a peculiar beauty peculiar okay i did an extensive study of that itself is a topic by itself But all i am trying to say is the president is very very yeah the many chief ministers have had fight with the why you our uh, local tamil nadu chief minister also is an expert in duel with governors so the point i'm trying to make is that's part of the game i'm not trying to bring politics in but see this is what we are talking about the law and as such this is the law in fact at one point in time you know i was as usual in my own style you know in a public tv program that to government channel i told like this see president power and all simple my father you know used to say my son will not cross the line that i have drawn my son will not cross the line that like lakshman rekha you know my father used to say my son will not cross the line that i have drawn some guest will come to our house no you will say you know sir my son is such a obedient boy he will not cross the line that i have drawn then he will say i will cross i will draw the line only after consulting him <laughs> get the point i will draw the line only after consulting him so this is the role of president see prime minister cannot cross the line drawn by the president but president will draw the line only after consulting the prime minister so who has more power you decide anyway so i know this is a little advanced and unnecessary but think about it after all by passing the exam you will become a chartered accountant but there is much more to being a chartered accountant than passing the examination okay chalo so there is something called retrospectivity that means making the law applicable to a back date making the law applicable to a back date cannot be done 
normally. All laws which affect substantive vested rights generally operate prospectively. That means when a law is amended, the amendment will only apply to the future. It cannot apply to a past. Normally, there is a presumption against their retrospectivity. So unless specifically mentioned, unless specifically mentioned, any law or amendment is prospective. It will apply only to the date it is made effective and thereafter. You cannot go back. But where the parliament expressly states it has retrospective effect, then, or the language implies that retrospective operation is intended, then it will happen. Normally, a taxing statute cannot operate retrospectively. Because any benefit given to the citizen cannot be taken away retrospectively. So you cannot, give, for example, tax rates cannot be amended retrospectively. Based on which I have paid my advance tax, you cannot now go and amend it. So you can't, but some aspects they will amend in order to prevent uh, the, For example, when Vodafone case, now when it was Supreme Court passed the order, there was a consequent amendment to Section 9 of the Income Tax Act, by which they said, where a share of a foreign company derives its value, from an Indian company or an, share or an Indian assets then, even though the shares are being sold between two non-residents, the capital gain arising will be taxed in India. What of them? Now, they amended. It's an amendment. But they made it retrospective 14 years. So that what of them will be covered. So that what of them transaction will be covered. So they made it retrospective. You, that was even commented about by the the professionals and they said such retrospectivity uh, should not be there, there. Merely for covering this, they did it. Like, yeah, they, only for that, they did it. And then they went to um, assess uh, what of So, retrospectivity is normally not allowed. Means retrospective means making the law applicable from back date. Not allowed. Unless you can't presume it. If the law is silent, it is only future. But if the law specifically says applied to a past date, it will, can be made appealing. Okay. Of course, you can question that also in a court whether this is because you can say one of my fundamental rights is uh, violated by uh, this. Okay. So you have to see the language in which it occurred. And believe me, retrospectivity, once enacted in parliament, the constitutionality cannot be questioned because retrospective operation can be done. The, the parliament has the right to make a law retrospective, but still you can say it is harsh and it takes away a right which was conferred earlier and because of which many people are getting affected. If you are able to show that there is a substantial, uh, you can try your luck, but uh, you cannot question the retrospectivity. You cannot say, how can it be made retrospective? Okay. Mr. Divya Kumar, I don't understand. Everyone is related to each other. So, I don't know. Maybe you are answering some question I asked. I don't know. Repeal means when the law is not, is made not applicable. For example, the Companies Act 2013 was enacted. No, it repealed the 56 Act. It repealed the 56 Act. But the repeal shall not revive anything not enforced or prevailed during the period at which the repeal is affected or affect the previous operation of any enactment. For example, when the Income Tax Act is amended, na, some of the earlier sections may be repealed. But for those assessment years where the section was there, it will still apply. See, a new, a new Finance Act can remove a section, but it will be removed only prospectively. So, it, it unless it is retrospectively removed, rarely will they remove a beneficiary section, will they make it retrospective. They will always make it prospective, which means in those earlier years, it is applicable like that. A repeal will be only from, in other words, repeal is always prospective. Any old law which is there, you are subject to it. Any act done under, on that date will be covered by the old law. Okay. Which is why for almost 14 years, your, your Income Tax Act provision of one assessment year, you have to be aware of it 14. Why? Because they can reopen 14 years for foreign transactions. Indian transactions, it's years. So you cannot say, sir, uh, assessment year 20, uh, 19, 20, not relevant anymore, sir. For your information, I am fighting cases for 2013-14. <laughs> so I have to check up 2013-14 law. 
I have to see whether this is applicable in 1314. Because 2122, an amendment came. But 1314 is not there. It is applicable. So you have to check whether in that year the law was applicable or not. Okay. We especially income tax where every year they keep amending. So we have to be very clear from which date the provision changed. I have to be very, very careful. So any right, privilege or obligation or liability under any enactment, so repeat. So any repay will not take away any right conferred or any action done, punishment, anything will continue as if that law is there for those periods. Future, it will not return. Okay. So repeal shall not affect the continuance of any amendment made by the enactment so repealed and in operation at the time of such repeal. Okay. Just a, sometimes a repealed enactment may be revived. If they want, they can do that. They can revive the repealed enactment. Okay. See, the Companies Act was not fully repealed. It was kept alive. And slowly it was, it was repealed. And even though some portions are continuing. Very, very important. I even mentioned it. Where this act or central act or regulation made after the commencement of this act repeals and reenacts with or without modification any provision of a former enactment, then references in any other enactment or in any instrument to the provision so repealed shall, unless a different intention appears, be construed as references to the provision so reenacted. Complex English sentence, simple words. Old law is referred to in the in any enactment. Law is repealed. New law has come. Old law is still is still being mentioned by another law. Then that reference will be taken as reference to new law. I gave an example also. Income tax act still talks about old section 394 and all. No 394 is not there. 56 act is not there. We should have 235. So it will apply to that. So the new section will apply. Okay. You will, it, reference to the old section will be construed as reference to the new section. Reenacted section. That is all. This is a beautiful provision. Remember it. Because whenever in some act you find some repealed act, immediately don't jump around and say, no, 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 sir, it's a repealed act. It, the section itself is ineffective. No, 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 no. Check whether there is a corresponding section in the new law. If so, that section will become relevant. Reference will be to that section. Please do that. If no such new provision is there, then you can say this reference is infructuous. This condition need not be complied with because that law is no longer there. Only then you can say that. Don't you think the General Clauses Act is very useful to you as a practitioner? I think so. As a CA going to practice, yes. if you are going to if you are going to uh, specialize in direct or indirect tax, also knowledge of General Clause Act becomes very important. See, there may be some among you who are very who like income tax a lot. Not me. <laughs> not me. Not me. Okay. I practice income tax because to earn bua. Not my favorite subject. But I'm good at it. See, I'm good at it, but I don't love it. But there are a lot of people who love it. <laughs> Seriously. They I'm not joking. They love that law. They read it. They enjoy reading it and all. I do my best limited knowledge only I have. Whenever I need, I go in depth, learn, come win the case, come back, earn my money and run away. Otherwise, I don't make it a habit of, you know, torturing myself by reading the land. But now the point is, and I'm able to manage, I have managed 58 years, I managed with the limited knowledge in income tax. Nobody can blame me for it. When I need the knowledge, I will get it. When I don't need the knowledge, I simply sit reading Shakespeare and Milton. Why I will waste my time reading income tax. So now the point I'm making, my dear friends, is if you are going to, so you are a person who loves income tax, then you are going to specialize. Even if you get into a company, you are going to become corporate tax department. Later on, at the age of 50, 45, you are going to become expert in the taxation and uh, you might even quit your company and join Ernst and Deng or KPMG or uh, take up your own consulting in taxation, whatever. In that case, your knowledge of general classes act is, these, import, these are all important. If you know it, it is good. Sir, repeal means act is not made applicable, sir. Re repeal means kadam ho gaya. The direct is no longer there. Even if it is not there, from the day it is repealed, it is repealed only, it will no longer be there. For the future, future it will not be there. But past is there, now. When the act was applicable, anything done during that period, continue, the, any penalty and all, will those provisions will continue to be applicable. 
Are you able to understand? So even though it is repealed, any right acquired or any company, any 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 offense committed under the old law will still be punishable. If, because it is repealed, you cannot say, no, no, it's repealed. What I did in the past, now you forget. No. If when the act was there, any offense was committed, that will be punished under the old law or under the new law. The new law may make a provision. It may say, all offenses committed under these, these sections of the old law will now be punished under this section. Or if they don't do that, then the punishment sections alone will survive and they will be applicable. I hope this is the best explanation I can give you. This part of you do, do, don't uh, waste your time. Okay. Don't waste your time. Some repealed laws can be revived. That's all. Revival means it will be made applicable again. Okay. This I think you have understood. When the law is repealed, ma, some other law may still mention the old law, repealed law. You cannot say that the reference is wrong. You should see whether that repealed law was replaced by a new law. If so, that reference in the other enactment no, to the repealed law will be construed as references to the new law. That's what it means. Okay. I gave you an example also. No? Income tax act talks about amalgamation provision, old law. But it will be now construed as reference to the new law, 2039. Okay. So we move on to. I'm not going to give a break because, uh, you know, anyway, you're going to go on delay and then I'm going to stop. Let's see. And around the end, if I can give five minutes and then they can take over. Okay. Okay. So we have finished repealed enactments. Then termination of time, continuation, uh, commencement and termination. We already saw this. When we were discussing meetings, so when the word from and to are used, then the word, when it says from a date to a date, the date from which should not be included. The, they're excluding the first in a series of days. So when it says from 28th of, uh, from 24th of uh, whatever, from 24th of, no, 25th of January. Then 25 should not be taken. You should start counting only from 26. So, Komal Limited declares a dividend at its AGM held on 27th September, referring to the provisions. When are they supposed to pay dividend? Within 30 days from the date of declaration. So, for counting 30 days, you should not consider the date of AGM. Thereafter, they have to transfer that uh, dividend within seven days to the unclaimed dividend account. So for counting seven days from the date of, from the end of 30th day, so that day should not be taken. The next day you have to take. So payment of dividend. Okay. Under the provisions of section 127, which you read, the company is required to pay declared dividend 30 days from the date of declaration. That is from 28 to 27 10. In this series of days, 27.9 will not be taken. Their meeting was held on 27th. Now that will not be taken. Instead, you take 28th and then count 30 days. So up to 27.10. While counting from to exclude the date from. So here it says from the day, 30 days from the date of declaration. So date of declaration should not be included. Thereafter, count 30 days. The last day, 30th day before midnight, you have to pay. Similarly, seven days. From the date of expiry of the set period of seven days. Within seven days, from the date of expiry, which means you should not count the last 30th day. The last 30th day is 2710, not included. Therefore, you start 28, 28, 29, 30, 31, 1, 2, 3. Both days includes third. Eh, simple. From when it says from a date to, to a date, do not take the first in that series. The date from, no, don't take it. That's all. Okay. So, similar example is there. Okay. SEBI regulations. Okay. Notified 14th August with the effect from 1st January 2016. So, any specific date of enforcement prescribed in the official gazette, the act shall come into enforcement from that date. So, here, you know, though it uses the word from, don't worry. Because this from to is only for determining period, termination of time. So here the word from is from which date it is coming. So 
see the act was notified on 14th august but with the effect from 1st january 16 that means though it was notified on 14th august it will come into effect only from 1st january i told you now there will be a notification of the law and another notification for the date if the act itself says this is the date on which it will come into effect it will come into effect only from that date see these are all very ticklish uh, issues which you have to be careful about whenever you have a thing you know don't immediately rush into conclusions this topic can be understood from two sides yeah one as a student you should be able to write the answer the other as a professional it's a larger thing okay where by any legislation or regulation any act or proceeding is directed or allowed to be done or taken in any court on a certain day if that court or office is closed on that day or the last of the prescribed last day of the prescribed period then that act or proceeding shall be considered as done in due time if it is done on the next day on which the court or office is open see simple i will give one example mr a was supposed to file an appeal the appeal was to be filed within 30 days on the 30th day only he is he is only waiting that day on the 28th day mr modi ji appears on television and says all of you go home don't come out pandemic corona court is closed income tax office is closed everybody closed i cannot even go what do i do nothing wait for the court to open again wait for the income tax office to open again on the first day when it is open after this announcement and that day if you go and file that it will be as if you have done it correctly that's all so, corona time many people were calling sir what to do what advise no they will announce when the income tax office is open and that time we will go then they announced for six months later they said government offices can function with skeleton staff at that time filing was not permitted so no later on they said filing will be permitted but you have to come in mask you have to give social distance block on that day we went and filed okay this is for physical filing for online filing no date you have to file but even then they gave permission they gave a government general circular saying uh, don't worry file it within such and such a date it is enough they gave because all said and done people could not even come and meet in the office and do anything you know pk and vk had a long dispute regarding ownership of a land the court fixed the date of hearing on 29 4 subsequently it was announced as a holiday by the government now you have to consider the next day on which the court will appear and that will be the date of hearing even the court need not tell you you can appear on that day when it will be open next working day similarly here also on the on that day the high court was closed due to lockdown total lockdown pandemic whatever 30th march 2022 lockdown not lockdown pandemic okay i don't think 22 pandemic was there so no need to ajit can submit an appeal on the day when the high court is open right distances are measured in a straight line on a horizontal plane okay not by the road see by road it may be 60 kilometers but what you should do you should take you should step on the map horizontal plane on the map you put a pin then take a scale and draw a straight line to the other place and then you have to measure if you have studied the map reading in your 10th standard you will understand they will give the scale also using this they not measuring scale they will give the scale they will say 1 cent 1 uh, km equal to 1 cm like that what what so you have to take that and see how many centimeters then how many kilometers that will be taken as the thing okay horizontal plane which is why your google map distances cannot work here. because google map uses uh, roadway road measurement no similarly income tax act was amended and said for agricultural land 9 km should be measured as the crow flies <laughs> there is the word as the crow flies me how the crow will fly yeah in a straight line as the crow flies in fact again more of an interesting point i am sitting in my office now in tinagar in chennai my house is on the other side but if i go by road i have to take a c that is i have to go straight right right to reach my house or le- uh, i have to go right left left it's behind one thing but as the crow flies you know my house is exactly opposite to my office i can straight line but i can't fly now i'm not a crow so i have to go by road but while counting distance 
I have to count only the straight line on your horizontal plane. Okay. There are two ways to reach the city from A to B. Roadway is 100 kilometers by waterway is 80. How is the distance to be measured? Neither. You have to take only the distance on a straight line on a horizontal plane. Okay. So you have to take a map. A to B, you have to see neither 100 kilometers nor 80 kilometers. You measure on a horizontal plane and see. And that will be the measurement. The word Income Tax Act uses the word as the crow flies. So there, General Classes Act won't appear. It will be as a crow flies. How the crow will fly, I don't know. Again, crow will fly in a straight line. That is the assumption. There is a novel by Jeffrey Archer, you know, as the crow flies. Okay. Nice novel. One of his earlier good novels recently has become a mess. Once upon a time, Jeffrey Archer novel. Okay. Duty, be take, duty to be taken pro rata, where any enactment now in force or here are to be enforced. Any duty, duty means uh, uh, tax, duty, customs duty, excise duty, is leviable on any given quantity by weight, measure, or value. Then a like duty is leviable according to the same date on any greater or lesser quality. That is, suppose the duty is set for every 100 kilos, 20 rupees. Then for 50 kilos, 10 rupees. Pro rata. Pro rata means proportionate allocation. Suppose the law says for every 100 kilos, 20 rupees. I am only selling 50 kilos. Then half, 10 rupees. Pro rata. That's all. Jaha, gender and number. Good old, super. Words importing the masculine gender shall be taken to include female also. Sorry, this is not me. Nakale. Okay, so wherever the word he is used, uh, she is also included. So you do not write he or she, he or she. If you write he, it's enough. But why they said masculine gender? Why they cannot say what's importing the female gender shall be taken to include men also? Male chauvinism. Yeah. Macaulay was the ultimate male chauvinist. The British people were the ultimate male chauvinist. They came to India and abolished sati. And they said women's liberation, William Bentick. But in their own country, Women were not given the voting right. Do you know that? In England, women were not given the voting right. Women could not vote. Women could not hold property. Any property belonged to a woman was controlled by her husband. England, the so-called Western country. <laughs> Whereas in India, Raja Ram Mohan right came. So the minute we got independence, women became voting straight away in franchise. The minute Constitution of India gives voting right directly to women. Whereas British Parliament took a lot of time to give voting right to women. Okay. So the British possibly were not uh, very liberal people. They were, though in India they acted as if they are doing all sorts of social reform, in their own country they were radicals. But liberals all over the world, but radicals in their own country. Anyway, words in singular shall include the plural and vice versa. We saw this in your, uh, do you remember when we did, uh, did we, yeah, quorum, where we said members present shall form a valid quorum. We said the word members present, though it uses the word members, the singular shall include the plural and vice versa. So members will include member also. So single member can form a valid quorum. Okay. So on and so forth. But be, you have to be careful. The words, you know, should not be repugnant to the context. The repugnant means against, you know, giving a wrong meaning like that. For example, the words his father and mother have been construed to include her father and mother. And a daughter has been held to be liable to maintain her father. So though it says his, sir, it includes her also. But you cannot take it straight away and uh, use it. Where the intention is clear, then you cannot bring it. So the words male descendants occurring in section 7 of the Jota Nagpur has been interpreted not to include female. So there, it depends on the context. Okay. But where a word indicating a common gender is available, then... It cannot be. So, the word bullocks cannot be interpreted to include cow. Okay. Bullock is bullock, cow is cow. <laughs> bullock is male, cow is female. Clearly words are there. So, you cannot make a bullock a cow. Okay. Where be any central act or regulation made after the commencement of this act, any power is to be so Stanford, then unless a different intention appears, that power may be exercised from time to time as occasion again. So a more enabling provision. Where I have given the power to central government, whenever central government wants, it can use it. Okay. 
where there is a power to appoint, it includes the power to remove also. Okay? Where there is a power to appoint any, then unless otherwise it may be expressly provided, any such appointment may be made either by name or by virtue of office. Suppose, central government has the power to appoint, they can appoint a person or they can say, whoever is the currently the principal commissioner of income tax will be an ex officio member. That is called ex officio. Ex officio means arising from one's position or office. For example, there are some SEBI committees where they will say certain investor associations are very important, like the Tamil Nadu Investor Association, which means they will say this committee, the secretary of the Tamil Nadu Investor Association will be an ex officio member. So I was a secretary of Tamil Nadu Investor Association for three years. During that period, I was a member of the SEBI committee, only ex officio. Not Srikanth was not the member. Secretary was the member. When I was a secretary, I will go. If I am no longer secretary, the new secretary will go. So it has nothing to do with me. It was not some greatness for me. It is a greatness for the position that secretary of the Tamil Nadu Investor Association will go. When I was secretary, I went. When somebody else is secretary, he will go. Okay. That is called ex officio member. Usually, they, because when they appoint uh, to any position, no, they will appoint a government official. Only. So, that official itself will change. Therefore, they say, so-and-so designation will be a member like that. Minute the new incumbent comes, he will become a member. So, these are all more for making things easy. That's all. The, the idea of these sections is to make things easy. So, power to appoint includes the power to suspend or dismiss. So when there's a power, see, when I have the power to grant, I have the power to take. So if I can appoint him, I can also suspend or dispense him. Unless there is another, there is an intention to the contrary. Okay. So when, a, when an authority has the power to appoint, it also has the power to suspend or dismiss. Okay. So just these are all more of provisions you can take. So the government can also make rules and bylaws and all that. They provided these are published in the official gazette. This is a very interesting point. Where an act or omission constitutes an offence under two or more enactments, same point becomes an offence under two or more enactments. Then the offender shall be liable to be prosecuted and punished under either or any one of those enactments. But shall not be punished twice for the same offence. See, if he has committed an offence, that act is an offence under both, uh, uh, you know, both laws. Two laws, it is an offence. Now, can he be punished under two laws? No. You choose which law you want to punish and punish. But he cannot be punished twice for the same offence. Okay? So, Omitted means, you see, act will be repealed in that. Act will be repealed. Any word or phrase in an act will be omitted. Are you able to understand? Act will be repealed. But in that act, you know, there may be a section or a word or phrase that will be omitted. So one subsection will be omitted. Are you able to understand? Or one section will be omitted. Or one word in a section will be omitted. That is not omitted. Whereas repealed means the entire act will be removed. So we don't say we are repealing one section and all. We are repealing, we are omitting that section. But uh, repealing the act. That is the understanding. Okay. No break, Mr. Gupta. No break. I'm going to stop at 8 o'clock or maybe another 5 minutes. If this topic gets over, you will get your break. Enjoy. Give me another 2 minutes. The topic will get over. So, no person shall be, again, Article 20, subsection 2, talks about no person shall be prosecuted and punished for the same offense more than once. This is called double jeopardy. This is a different context altogether. That is, he, he, once you are acquitted by a court, you know, you can't again be prosecuted. That is called double jeopardy. The Constitution of India also gives you double jeopardy. American Constitution also gives double All democratic constitutions give double jeopardy. You get it for it. So, Mr. Ram, an advocate, has fraudulently deceived his client, Mr. Sham, who was taking his expert advice on taxation matters. No, Mr. Ram is liable to a fine for acting fraudulently, both under the Advocates Act as well as the Income Tax Act. Said the provisions. Okay. Now, Mr. Ram shall be liable to be punished under Advocates Act or Income Tax Act. 
but shall not be punished twice for the same offense. So you choose where you want to take him. Ideally, take him in advocate's advocate side. Because there, you know, you can he can escape. Whereas here he can't. Income tax act, no. You will be caught. Income tax act is defense. Nothing is there. Okay. Where any legislation or regulation, Mr. Gupta, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know you are tense. If you want to go to the washroom, you go, but otherwise just give me two minutes. I'll finish it. Same of madam, now you are telling differently. What you, madam, no, 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 no. Sweta Maruti, no, 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 don't, don't do like this. If he has committed the same offense three times, sir. if he commits the same offense, again he can be prosecuted, ma. See, madam, Mr. Mr. E, Mrs. A dies. Mr. A is suspected of uh, the, the murder. Now they fire prosecute him. He goes before the court. Court acquits him and says he is not the murderer. He goes, again for the death of his wife, you cannot prosecute him. Please understand, again for that murder of that wife, you cannot prosecute him. Mr. A marries again. Again his wife dies. Sir. Again suspicion. Uh, now you can go prosecute him. Why sec third offense? Second offense you can. This fellow has a habit of murdering wife. <laughs> Whatever it is, the first offense is out. He is acquitted. You can't again prosecute him for it. But if he kills one more lady, you cannot say, no, no, no. For murdering wife, he has been acquitted once. No, no, no. no. This is another wife, another offense. Again, you can. So are you able to understand? See, you didn't file the annual. Okay, why murder? You didn't file the annual return for 22 March. Right? Offense. You have been acquitted. Again, you cannot be punished for that. But if you don't file for 23, for that you can be punished. Okay. So, if it commits the same offense three times, then how will he be punished? Very badly. <laughs> Very badly. Certain laws, you know, repeat offenders will be double penalty. So, this is not to protect repeat offenders. This is to prevent uh, a person from being punished uh, for the same offense twice. Are you able to understand the word same offense? You can't do another offense. <laughs> that will be punished again. How to explain to you further? I don't know. Have you understood the... Uh, Ms. Sweta, Mrs. Sweta. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I really enjoy all these questions. Okay, so where any legislation or uh, regulation requires any document to be served by post, then unless different intention appears, service shall be deemed to be affected by properly addressing, prepaying, and posting by registered post. Once it would be delivered by the ordinary course of post. So you once you prove that you have posted it correctly, properly addressed. Uh, it is deemed to have been served. Okay. So this is the, the idea is, did he post it correctly? Yes. I need not prove that you got it. See, now Mr. Weiss has contended that no notice was served to him. Sorry. Mike has sent it by post. That's all. I have, what should I do? Properly address it, prepay it, post it. By registered post. That is why, you know, many times when I am doubtful of your party's behavior, I will not send it by ordinary post. I will send it by registered post. And have the proof of delivery also. With courier, you cannot proof of delivery. If you say, I don't know, I don't know, so whichever donkey took it in your office, you go and inquire. It has been delivered. See, like that. Very difficult to, you know, play games with the person who has documentary proof. Sometimes they'll be very unhappy when I show all the proof and all. So, Srikanth, you don't trust people. Are you keeping all records? I said, definitely, yeah. people like you cannot be trusted. That is why I'm keeping records. You know, you are coming and arguing, saying and you never got it. Similarly, many people will tell, Sir, Mr. Srikant, that is a different thing. I sent you the mail. I agree. You sent me the mail, but I didn't get it. There you can tell that. Okay. But there again, I will tell you, if the mail is properly addressed to the correct email ID and sent by proper method, not receiving it is not my problem. Suppose my server is out, I can't do anything. I have to only show that I mailed it to your email address. If you have not, if your mail, if your mail server is not working, or if you are not using that email address, that is not my problem. You have registered it here with me. And I have sent it to that email address. It is your duty to go and see it. Okay. He murders his wife, get 10 years jail, come back on uh, bail, next day kill, second wife, get another 10 years. Now he'll be jailed for 10 years or 20 years. I don't know the, sir, I'm not an advocate, criminal advocate, sir. I'm an ordinary chartered accountant. I don't know what is the punishment for uh, wife. I don't think it's 10 years. I don't know. Maybe life also. I don't know. So, I don't know. The answer to your question, Manish Kumar Ji, is I, have not, I don't intend to kill my wife. 
and i am not aware of what is the punishment for killing wife but if for the second offense also he will be punished whatever is the punishment will be given to him who will decide to choose the punishment for same offense sir he cannot be punished for the same offense sir that is the point you are not able to understand you leave it he cannot be punished for the same offense twice sir but for another offense he can be punished you understand what is an offense first okay so same thing here so where any previous enactment is saved then that will become applicable so for the example the companies that though fully repealed in 56 act certain sections are still saved and made applicable okay now see today i have uh, completed the class in fact i have completed the topic also general class of that but some portions are there very very boring area you you are welcome to read it on your own enjoy if you have a doubt next class you ask me i'll clarify for you i'm sure you will not have a doubt from the exam point of view everything pakka covered for you note and please know what i have taught that is more than enough my humble request to you okay now uh, as i mentioned as i mentioned to you today uh, there are uh, we are having a, you know some faculty from the board of studies who are hopefully here with us yes board of studies here with us and uh, there have been many questions raised during my session etc especially with relation to law as to how to write the answer uh, what to be written and so on and so forth whether this is important that is important and uh, uh, whether uh, you know what how much uh, i mean all that i don't want to go into it you can raise any doubt you want to them we are having uh, two uh, I, I, in my humble view very intelligent ladies i have been interacting with them uh, for the last 4 uh, years now since the pandemic 20 uh, 20 onwards i have been interacting i find both of them to be extremely intelligent sincere and knowledgeable they are here to help you and uh, miss i think if i remember correctly if i know correctly mrs shraddha and mrs nisha are here or maybe mrs mega they are here they will take over from here and they will answer your queries good evening madam good evening sir good evening i am very thank you sir really... it was a great <laughs> session and even we have enjoyed a lot listening the session okay. and hope our okay. students has also enjoyed the same and they must be very much clear with the concept the way you have explained each and everything very uh, you can say in a Thoroughly. friendly as well as in a very simplified manner and that was really great sir thank you sir thank you sir thank for you. this such a wonderful session sir so nice now i will hand over the proceedings to mr shraddha and mrs nisha and i will take leave of all of you thank you very much bye thank you sir thank you sir so i will leave no madam yes yes sir thank you sir uh okay. students welcome to you all on this lvc classes and yes we are the faculties now we are taking up the class further to carry forward yes myself nisha and c h shraddha Yes, welcomes to you all on this session of General Clauses Act. Yes, the session was really great, great, great. Even we were continuously laughing and just seeing how simplified way the sir has explained each and every concept, and really it was wonderful. In fact, I would like to say that ki, yes, this is the right platform where you are being connected directly with such an expert faculties. who are throwing light on the subject in free cases you know that way you are able to understand thoroughly the concept because you must be knowing that this paper is also containing mcqs of course and sure the mcqs is such an important thing where either student scores completely the fully marks or he may he may be either losing the complete full the full marks so that way only their requirement is the conceptual understanding and the sir the way correlated with the live examples that examples definitely will help you to retain the concept in a nice manner and that to have a good grasp on the subject that will really help you in solving the mcqs nature of the questions and definitely somewhere if the concept and provisions are clear then no doubt that descriptive questions will also be seem will be also be easy at the same time so dear friends let's start up with the session since we have been seeing that many general queries have been receiving throughout the classes and that is where we are here with you so as to just come up with all these general sessions and you students must be little bit you know 
there must be having a lot of dilemmas running in their minds ki how the questions are going to come and how we are going to write down the answers reading learning and writing these are all the three different steps and everything has its own relevance reading is of course important and then writing and practicing is again very important so there is only the difference how you represent it how you read the strategies is different but yes there is required a proper strategy when you go with the proper planning the strategy you are able to go in a proper and systematic and orderly manner to gain a good marks yes so uh, <clears throat> i have nothing much to say to you students as of now for uh... Sir has left the class at a very high note, and Nisha Ma'am has taken up the class on a very further. She has a lot of enthusiasm, and we are very happy and excited to meet you again after a long time. And as you know, this paper, this is paper two, corporate and other laws. And uh, till now, we are just left with one session more, which is your uh, interpretation of statutes. So. You must be knowing everything about the syllabus and everything, but then also we will brief you a bit. This paper is of 100 marks, wherein the syllabus is divided into two parts. Part one, which is related to co company law and the LLP Act, which is for 70 marks. And the part two is for other laws, which is of 30 marks. In part two, we have three acts, the Journal Clauses Act, FEMA and Interpretation of Statutes. Yes, and by this time... You must be seeing everything is complete except the one chapter is left as of now. So if as far as when I was seeing the sir was teaching the General Clauses Act. So at the very same time, it just strike on section 26 of the General Clause Act, which was talking about with respect to the article 20, which is your fundamental right under the Constitution of India. So yes, in that case, even while sir was teaching this, all of a sudden it came to my mind, ki, yes, the example of a very great Indian movie, that is the Andha Kanun. I hope if you all have watched this movie, the, you'll be correlating this section very easily. And yes, there it has been said that he, that the other lead, lead role was played by the Amitabh Bachchan, where he has already been punished for a murder case. But later, after the commission of the murder, in real sense, he has committed murder later on. And whatever he says in front of the judge, you cannot prosecute me twice for the same act, which was already I have suffered that much punishment, whatever has been leaven earlier when I have not committed that act. But now I have committed that act. So that way now you cannot punish me twice for the same act. So that way there are many things where you can correlate such type of example to make out and recall the concept. As also the example was given by the sir also with respect to the re uh, marriage of again and again or the Bikami case where there is under the IPC <clears throat> Act. So yes, that is also a kind of example in itself to retain these concepts. And in fact... It was very enjoyable. If you want to get stuck up somewhere related to commencement of time or something, repealment of act, how does it give the effect with respect to the you know, applicability of the provision? So yes, this GC Act has its own importance because sometimes it happens, there are many provisions or many things which has no clarity or where it's not been specifically specified under the special act. In that case, the GC Act plays a role. This GC Act helps you to draw a generalized meaning what sense of what interpretations could be drawn in that uh, in particular with reference to that particular section in reference to that particular act if nothing is being specified over there so gc is a kind of a general act basically and similarly gc is also read with the interpretation of the statutes both are interrelated, interrelated. so don't make the in don't uh, try to miss out this interpretation class also because this will help you in understanding because already your base building is done through the way of the gc act now, when you're going to read and study the interpretation of statutes, you will easily catch what are the general principles that are applicable in during the interpretation of the act. Basically, Shraddha, the thing is that interpretation of statutes is made by, you know, judicial person while interpreting the law. They are made in the courts. But there are certain principles which helps you on the basis of that interpretation is drawn. Whereas GC Act gives you to draw the meaning, whatever the law is given. This is the generalized meaning being drawn while reading and understanding of the concept where there is no explanation or there is no specific meaning, meaning given under any specific act. So at that time we refer these two kind, these two acts specifically and in end to understand what does exactly the law interprets in that situation. So <clears throat> this was a... Uh, uh, what should I say that uh, ma'am has given you a very apt example and taking things further, I will say 
that the way man has given you an example, just remember it. And I will be using this corollary later on this on, in this session. The thing is, uh, I have told you about the syllabus and then we have to come to the, like, you have read everything. But ultimately, the aim is to pass the examination. So we have been receiving a lot of queries with respect to this. Be aware that the paper of 100 marks will be divided into 30 and to 70, 30 marks of MCQs and 70 marks of descriptive questions, which you already know. Yes, when we talk about the MCQs, you know, the MCQs will be of case scenario based. Please take it a note. It will be a case scenario. Case scenario means a situation will be given. A situation will be given and you have to draw the correct answer. Options will be there. You have to find out the correct as well as reasonable or appropriate answer, whatever out of the given options. So that way MCQ will be there. Then descriptive questions, of course, as Shraddha has told you of 70 marks, that will be there. So basically, this is the general paper uh, division that we have told you. So while preparing the paper, uh, this for the papers, keep in mind that while you are preparing for the MCQ portion, try to focus more on the case scenario based questions as once you have prepared for the case scenario based questions, your independent MCQs will be already taken care of. So uh, <clears throat> if you have prepared for a higher level, like if for the M case scenario based questions, then your the little things that is independent MCQs will already be covered by you while you are preparing for them. So just keep in mind that the paper would be divided into 30 is to 70. Yes, uh, there's a one query received by Sen uh, Miss Sentha Miller, huh? Sentha, Sentha Miller, right? Mm -hmm. So she has wrote about it, uh, whether she is eligible for May 24 examination after this getting the registered provisional uh, mark sheets and all this. So you can do one thing, mm -hmm. you can write your mail to the nidhi.agrawal at the rate ISI.in. So you can send your query over there. So she will be just taking up care after that. So uh, one student has also asked, ma'am, is negative marking in exam for all subjects? As far as we have the information, there is no, no negative, negative marking in any of the subjects at intermediate level. However, the same will be more clarified by the exam department. But as far as we have the information, there is no negative marking. Apart from that, uh, <coughs> ma'am, in writing the examination, handwriting is main thing to get the marks or it is it also affects any marks. So, um, we will talk about that also. So while you have to prepare for your MCQs, do make use of the MCQ dashboard uh, portal that is there. Now MCQ is available, applicable for each and every paper. Yes. Earlier it was restricted only for four papers. But now, since you are all the new students for the new uh, course that has, that has been enrolled and appearing for May 24. So now... This is applicable for all paper. There will be a MCQs as well as the descriptive question. Yes, students, the kind of queries that we are getting, I would request you all to visit the website of the institute once because uh, I'm like it is very, very, very important for the students to know that they are asking questions like that uh, whether MCQ is available for paper one, two, and three also. Yes, you need to be aware of these things. Supposedly, you have not prepared for it and they, they come in your examination at the last moment, you will be in a very panicking kind of a situation. So please, please, please visit the website of the Institute, not only for our subject, that is corporate and other laws, but for every subject. You are at intermediate level and, uh, and sometime you will be going to the final level also. Always be aware of the latest development not only in terms of the amendment that uh, the taxation or dt idt or law or audit people are uh, posting on the website how uh, there are more things than that so please go to the mcq dashboard there you will find everything so visit the website yes the mcq dashboard as shanda said it is a very good initiative taken by the bus for the benefit of you students you may be finding a lot of the you know mcq's nature of the question has been posted for your practice you know it will not only make you to just practice in your subject but also will give you clarity on the subject which is yes the very much requirement which is the need of the r because when you are reading the law the conceptual understanding can only bring clarity in the understanding of the subject. And then not only will be able to write your answer as per the requirement of the question. So this is for your sake of practice. Can we go through the MCQ dashboard and try to solve the question? And it will directly at the very same mode to also give you the result also. Yes. And then uh, Mr. Xavier, 
taking your thing further that you have wrote about the writing for people like you who are a bit confused that whether writing uh, is good like how we have to write we will be taking that up also uh, mcqs are a short short passing criteria for people like you because some students have a lot of clarity but they don't know how to present the answer though we will be covering but for those kind of students mcq in that you can get full 30 marks provided your concept clarity is there because in mcq the options would be very near mm -hmm. to each other and uh, just concentrate on the understanding once you know what to write you will be definitely able to write but there is a catch so let's discuss yes so ma'am uh, can you just guide the students how to write the answer descriptive since we are taking about yeah. the MCQ so take up the descriptive part also yes when we talk about the descriptive questions so what the thing is that generally the level of the knowledge that is expected at the intermediate level is the working knowledge and analysis, analysis as well as application nature of the testing is there the questions are testing your how you can analyze the law within the given situation as per the law so there should be application of law analysis of the situation and application of the law so in that case, what the thing is required, the question will be giving a situation that means and now they are going to say you now you analyze the situation and which law will be applicable and how you are going to apply within the provided information. So whenever these nature of question is being asked, you need to require to mention first which relevant legal provision is applicable over there. So you need to mention the relevant legal provision, what the legal provision says, then you have to bring out the legal issues means whatever the issues has been pointed in the question so that legal issue should be there and then later on after that you need to you know sinking between the whatever the legal uh, this legal provision is there or whatever is the legal issues when you link both the thing then you will applying on the same situation then you conclude the answer yes as per the legal provision under this situation this will be the answer so that way you have to give the complete answer whenever these types of questions are there of five or four marks whatsoever. But if it's the nature of analytical and application based, you need to give the entire, you know, complete answer in itself along with the legal provision, which is supporting your answer, which is supporting your justification. Then only it will keep coming out as a complete answer with proper conclusion. Then only you'll be able to secure good marks as per the expectations but if you miss out any of the step because there's a proper step marking to the answers you know whenever the uh, these type of questions are being asked you can easily score the good marks because there's a step marking there's a breakup of marks so every step has a marks if you miss out conclusion so of course you will some marks will be deducted for the same if you miss out the legal provision in a complete sense mm -hmm. what in a complete sense means it should be properly supporting your answer in a correct manner, in a proper manner. It is not only just mentioning a single line, key, yes, it is given under this provision. Or you have mentioned everything, but wherever the main your answer yes. lies, which is the main essence or the main part of the legal provision which your answer lies. If that part is missing, then definitely you will be somewhere you will not be able to justify with a proper justification for your answer. And that is somewhere your marks may be deducted. So entirety with the proper, you know, with proper justification, and should be in complete sense that will give a expected answer. So just to remove one confusion, I will just add, ma'am has uh, used the word, like we are from law background, so we keep on looking for words. So ma'am has used the word uh, complete provision. I would just add to it the relevant provision. Reason being many students would take it as that they have to write the entire provision. If supposedly we have asked uh, section 111, so you will be writing the whole provision. What we are intending to say that the pro the facts of the question and the relevant part of that provision. Okay, so you have to write that. It just it does not mean that you have to write everything of that section, but you have to write the relevant portion in its entirety. You cannot miss that, and. In this question only, we would add more to it that uh, writing is an important part. And for that, you need a lot of practice. We will be releasing our RTP soon. Start practicing from it. You have other sources of practices also. 
once we have told you about the mcq portal which will be used for this uh, mcqs then for descriptive questions you can see the questions that are given at the back of uh, every chapter yes. which are which is your test your knowledge then apart from that you have uh, we will be releasing the rtp and in due course of time you will be having your mock test papers also mock test paper are an immense and very important source from where you can assess where you are standing as of now as the name suggests mock mock means that it will be exactly the same the way your paper will be there you can contact your nearest branch and give the paper with them and get it checked by the people who are there and if you are not able to then just do the paper at your home and uh, then check it with the answers that are uploaded at the website 48 hours or so after the paper is given to you but if you are attempting it at home be very sure that for those 3 hours you are not disturbed by anyone and you are writing them in the exact same manner the way in exact same situations the way you will be writing it during the examination and be very time bound be truthful to yourself while writing the answer so you have all the resources from which you can preparation is already done we are now telling you about how to uh what should i say um practice so practice and practice and practice more and you will be obviously able to do better so supposedly <clears throat> you are having some problems in writing once you write you will be facing problem but if you are doing it again and again then obviously your writing skills will improve yes even i'm seeing many queries are coming up uh, but yes uh, let's let's just finish two or three more important mm. um, general queries that generally we receive from the students so another thing is there many students at a time they are they're not able to retain the section and is there is a requirement of writing the sections within the answers and section and form numbers yes so the thing is that um, sec why i have a question from you students is it really too difficult to remember the section numbers if you are trying to memorize them it is actually very difficult even for us if i am trying to learn them agar main unhe ratta marna chahti hu to main usko nahi kar paungi but if i inculcate the habit that whenever i am reading a section i read it as per section this 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 then i go then there is no need to memorize ratta file it will automatically get memorized in my mind so read the law as along with the section number and the heading mm-hmm. so this will help you you know to retain to which particular section deals with which particular provision to so read with that particular heading the section number so you'll be easily to able to retain and recall while uh, read, uh, writing your answers during the examinations part so this i suppose that this has been uh, the same query has been raised by jyoti so jyoti i suppose that your query has been resolved with respect to this writing of section uh-huh. in the descriptive paper it's okay. not compulsory that yes. is what shraddha was saying it's not compulsory but is being expected because in the further in the course of when you are going to practice it will help you in the professional level uh, and it will make it easy to remember and uh, to just recall what all that relevant legal provisions are so try to read from this point of time only like we may say that it may not be affecting on the marks but just think it from the point of view it it is if i say that it is not compulsory that does not mean that uh, you don't have to learn them all like if you are in the habit of reading those section numbers and the form numbers there are two benefits of it first of all while writing in the examination you will be very sure of what you are writing secondly just after pe- passing this uh, examination you will be going for your article ship so when you are talking to your principal or uh, when you are talking to your clients Lines, of so at that time just imagine you will be at the uh, you will be having a some kind of etch okay i know the section number and i can talk to the person in terms of section numbers you are a professional and at the final level it will be much more better for you if you start inculcating this habit from right now on yes because law law means something you would be you should keep yourself a upper hand and how you going to you keep yourself as you know in comparison to the other laymen 
simply being a chartered accountant because you are pursuing your professional degree my dear friends and chartered accountants are being generally considered as very you know all in all the subjects they are considered as very good hold on the subject and they are very smart intelligent in tackling the professional part of their you know this aspect of their career so their needs and is being required that you know the sections number so when you start saying anything only just by simply saying the section number it give a different impression and the confidence and it will differ you from the other persons also ma'am iska ek example dungi main hindi mein yeah uh, hum hamesha news mein sunte hain dhara 370 which is not now there but aap koi bhi dhara jo sunte hain sorry but section dhara means dhara section. Means section hindi mein agar aap hmm. sunenge to dhara ya fir uh, ipc penal code ki is dhara ke tahat such kind of language is used वो हमेशा ही किसी ना किसी सेक्शन या रेफरेंस को दे के बात करेंगे बिल्कुल आप कभी भी देखिएगा पिक्चरों में भी बात होगी इवन इफ द एक्टर इज नॉट से नोइंग व्हाट द सेक्शन नंबर मींस और विच धारा दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट बट दे सेक्शन तीन सौ दो थ्री हंड्रेड एंड टू वेन दे टॉक अबाउट सेक्शन थ्री हंड्रेड टू और लाइबल फॉर द मर्डर यू नो दिस इज अगेन वेरी वन ऑफ दिन अगर कहेगा जज बोलेगा कि ऐसा करिए इसको ना फांसी की सजा दे दीजिए पांच साल की फांसी की सजा सॉरी नहीं दिस इज लीगल टर्मिनोलॉजी हैंग टिल डेथ वेन एवर एनी कैपिटल पनिशमेंट इज गिवन कैपिटल पनिशमेंट डजन इन फ्रॉम सम मनी रिलेटेड मैटर इट मींस द डेथ पनिशमेंट दिस इज द लीगल टर्मिनोलॉजी वेन यू टॉक इन दिस मैनर यूजिंग द लीगल यूसेज ऑफ द टर्म्स इट गिव्स अ डिफरेंट इम्पैक्ट so there is big required why we are seeing all these things this is just because try to read the law as it is what is given the barrett and the usage of the terminology will definitely somewhere reflects the yes. legal you know effect it will give you that legal hold on the subject the legal language will be reflected in your answer and definitely somewhere the you know that quality of answer will be differing from in a generalized way the answer has been given by the students so this is being required and that is why we have said yes this. and but in no case no case no case quote a wrong section number if you are not sure yes. yes or a wrong form number or a wrong case law never ever do that yes it is better not to write but never quote a wrong section number or act sometimes students write uh, wrong acts also और फॉर्म नंबर और केस लॉस जहां पे आप श्योर नहीं है वेर यू आर नॉट श्योर सिंपली राइट द नेम ऑफ द एक्ट इफ यूर नॉट श्योर अबाउट द एक्ट ऑल्सो सो वॉट यस इन द क्वेश्चन इट सेल्फ इट्स देयर so you can just apply your matter and yeah. sometimes it is not given the question with your general understanding he yes this question pertains to this matter and this matter has been covered in that particular act if it is related to companies of course companies act so you can write the general name of the companies act over there if it is related to you can say about something about the interpretation of when from commencement of date will be uh, interpreted in the given situation then you can take up the gc is something related to fair market decide the residential status of the person though act is not given but you can sometime make it out whatever the important aspect they have asked in the question you can make it out yes this pertain to that particular act it has been given over there so there you can by applying your mind you can give the reference of the act okay so there are many queries that we are uh, receiving with respect to examinations one query that has been raised uh, by one of the students earlier in one of the session was ki hindi ke paper mein hum kis level tak english ka use kar sakte yes बच्चों में ये बहुत कंफ्यूजन होता है वॉट हैपन इन सच एस हिंदी में बच्चों को ये रहता है कि जो टर्मिनोलॉजीज होती हैं, वो काफी टफ होती तो एंड इट इज नॉट ऑल्सो नॉट ओनली इन प्रनाउंसमेंट बट इन राइटिंग ऑल्सो दैट वे एंड नॉट ओनली फ्रॉम राइटिंग असर बट रिटेनिंग पॉइंट ऑफ इट ऑल्सो इज अगेन वन ऑफ द कंसर्न तो दैट वे वॉट हैपन जो हिंदी मीडियम के बच्चे हैं उनसे मैं यही कहूंगी कि दे मे राइट द टर्मिनोलॉजी इज इंग्लिश बट येस रेस्ट ऑफ दूर आंसर शुड भी आपका हिंदी में होना चाहिए पूरा ऐसा नहीं हो कि आप आधा लाइन हिंदी में लिख रहे हैं या आप कुछ वर्ड इंग्लिश कुछ वर्ड हिंदी ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए इट शुड बी आपका पूरा हिंदी मीडियम में होना चाहिए बट जस्ट यूसेज ऑफ सर्टन टेक्नोलॉजीज आई हैव सेड दैट यू कैन राइट इन इंग्लिश बाकी आपका पूरा पेपर हिंदी में होना क्योंकि आपने हिंदी माध्यम को अपना पेपर लिखने का चुना है तो आपको आंसर्स प्रेफर करना चाहिए कि पूरा हिंदी में लिखे आप उसमें बीच बीच में इंग्लिश की टर्मिनोलॉजीज यूज कर सकते हैं एंड yes. बच्चों आपको कहीं पर भी एग्जाम से रिलेटेड कोई चीजें आती हैं तो आप डायरेक्टली एग्जाम डिपार्टमेंट डिपार्टमेंट को मेल लिखिए क्योंकि आपके जो इश्यूज है रफ शीट होती नहीं हाँ. होती है प्रैक्टिस के लिए या आपका ये आ जाता है कि भाई 
हमें मतलब जगह को लेके किसी बच्चे ने पूछा था समय समय वाज विच सिटीज विल बी अलॉटेड या प्रिफरेंस विल बी एज पर वॉट एवर दे आर गोइंग टू फिल आउट ऑफ द आई सी आई विल बी डिसाइडिंग कैन बी कन्फर्म्ड बाय द एग्जामिनेशन डिपार्टमेंट मोस्ट प्रोबेबली आपने जो एक लाइन पूछी है कि आपका एग्जामिनेशन सेंटर को वो शायद आप भरते हैं yes, लेकिन, होती है, yes. लेकिन mm-hmm. क्योंकि हमें एग्जाम सेंटर का आपके पास वो आते हैं लेकिन आप ये समझिए कि हम एज बोर्ड ऑफ स्टडीज आपको उतना ही रिस्पांस दे पाएंगे हो सकता है इस अटेम्प्ट के लिए कुछ चेंज हो चेंज हो यस दे मे बी पॉसिबल तो आप इसलिए कन्फर्म कर लीजिएगा Before doing anything, what kind of a pen can be used or rough sheets and sheet everything? Yes. How to respond? Then, all these things. You have to always have your own whole admit card with you. What do we call it? Um, जिसमें आपकी सारी डिटेल्स इंस्ट्रक्शन डिटेल्स वो आपको बहुत ही अच्छे से पढ़ना है क्योंकि जब आप इंस्ट्रक्शन डिटेल्स पढ़ेंगे तभी आप उसका रिस्पांस दे पाएंगे ओके स्टूडेंट्स आर आस्किंग अबाउट दैट ईच एम सी क्यू इज वन मार्क Uh, that is will be since this is the first attempt, so we don't know that uh, MCQ will be of one marks or what. So that will be decided by the examination department. Okay, and uh, I supposedly think that does not make much of a difference to you as students that whether it will be a one mark or two mark in the sense that do your preparation. But आप इन चीजों पे इतना ध्यान focus मत करिए. अभी शायद किसी को भी नहीं पता है. हम्म जहाँ तक बात practice manual की है किसी एक बच्चे ने पूछा है. कि यस अबाउट द प्रैक्टिस मैनुअल आपके लिए नहीं मिलेगा कोई है ही नहीं यस आप प्रैक्टिस के लिए व्हाट 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 ऑल द थिंग्स वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग टू यू एमसीक्यू डैशबोर्ड इज देयर फॉर एमसीक्यू प्रैक्टिस राइट एंड फॉर दिस आरटीपी एमटीपी एंड एवरीथिंग विल बी देयर फॉर द प्रैक्टिस बट एज वेल एज इन द स्टडी मटेरियल विल बी हैविंग वेरियस क्वेश्चन एट द एंड ऑफ द ईच चैप्टर अंडर टेस्ट योर नॉलेज सो दैट विल बी हेल्पिंग यू अ लॉट एंड दैट विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग अ लॉट ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस फॉर प्रैक्टिस दैट वे So, Additionally, haan. if you want, you may refer past two to three attempts suggested papers, though they are not entirely applicable for you or anything. But uh, from the practice point of view, you may refer them to some extent. But be aware to the extent they it is covered from your study material, and you have to refer them in line with the latest applicable amendments for you. Yes. then uh, other important aspect uh, i suppose we have taken up all the thing but yes queries madam, are there let's yes. take up the queries yeah you are writing madam the mcq available in the bus website is mostly repetitive of same questions again and again no 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 the thing is that if you see the pattern of the mcq dashboard what they have done uh, many number of questions are there it pick by itself randomly yes, it picks up yeah. randomly this software randomly pick up the questions so for the students yes. it is no if you see we are not just providing you for uh, practicing as such ki acha khud pad lena we the portal is such that it is making you that they will choose the un- questions on their own the software chooses the question on their own and then you have to answer okay so it's not that they are of repetitive nature Okay, Shrinivasan. I hope you understood that way. Uh, then moving to the next thing, RTP yes, that thing, yes, बहुत जल्दी release हो जाएगा. But it is in the process, and very soon it will be available mm-hmm. for you students. Again, a student is asked by like heading like facts of the case, provision, conclusion are allowed in the exams. There is no need, but if you want and you have time, then you can write it. But as such, आप का जो आंसर लिखने का तरीका होगा द वे यू आर राइटिंग द आंसर विल मेक द डिफरेंस दैट इफ यू आर राइटिंग एज पर द प्रोविजंस ऑफ दिस एज अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस इट विल ऑब्वियसली मीन दैट सही एवरीथिंग इज राइट दैट वे लेकिन ये कि बस ये देखना सही प्रोविजन लिखना है फिर ये मत कहना हेडिंग तो लिखा है बट द प्रोविजन शुड आल्सो बी करेक्ट ओके देन ऑन लेट्स सी ओके मैम इट इज पॉसिबल टू लर्न सेक्शन बिल्कुल नहीं हाँ आप बिल्कुल सेक्शन को पढ़ सकते हैं लर्न करने का तो हम कहीं नहीं तरीक, नहीं लर्न तो देखो लर्न करना भी पड़ेगा बिकॉज इज इन क्लोज बुक इन क्लोज बुक टू सर्टन एक्सटेंट यू रिक्वायर टू लर्न सर्टन थिंग्स जस्ट दिन की आपको मेन बात पता होना चाहिए कि सेक्शन में क्या कहा गया वॉट द इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग हैज बीन गिवेन अंडर द सेक्शन अगर सेक्शन आपकी किसी सी एस आर के बारे में बात करता है तो आपको उसमें मेन चीज पता होना चाहिए कि सीएसआर में क्या इंपॉर्टेंट चीज बोली गई है क्या रिक्वायरमेंट है कौन कंपनी सीएसआर कमेटी अपॉइंट कर सकती है तो उसके लिए आपको क्या आपको पता होना चाहिए कौन सी कमेटी इलिजिबल है तो उसके लिए रिक्वायरमेंट्स हैं आपको वो रिक्वायरमेंट्स को आपको ध्यान रखना पड़ेगा मैं सीएसआर का एग्जाम्पल दिया मुझे ना जो प्रोविजन याद आया है आया मुझे याद आया कि बुक में ना ऐसे लिखा हुआ लिखा सेक्शन वन सो वी डोंट लर्न इट 
वो हमारे को अपने आप रिमेंबर हो जाता एवरी टाइम वी रीड द लॉ वी रीड विद द सेक्शन नंबर विद द हेडिंग तो इट इज दैट बिकॉज ऑफ दैट एवरी टाइम वी डू कीप ऑन रीडिंग इन दिस वे तो वी आर एबल टू रिटेन इट टू सर्टन एक्सटेंट रिटेंशन इज रिक्वायर्ड लेकिन आप जब बार बार पढ़ेंगे तो ऑटोमेटिकली इट विल कम जैसा पहले भी श्रद्धा ने आपको बोला था जब आप बार बार पढ़ते हैं तो ऑटोमेटिकली आ जाता है हमेशा देखेगा जब आप आपने पहले भी जब आपने टेंथ ट्वेल्थ सारे एग्जाम दिए होंगे तो उस टाइम पीरियड पे क्या होता है हमें बैठे बैठे ना अगर आंसर पूरा याद नहीं आ रहा होता तो हमें याद होता पेज के इस साइड पे लिखा था राम होता राम झा ने हत्या की कोशिश यस अटेम्प्ट टू मर्डर बिल्कुल होता है भाई अटेम्प्ट टू मर्डर भी होता है पर ये सेक्शन गलत लिखा है भाई जरा आईपीसी का सेक्शन जाके देखिएगा चार चार सौ पांच है तो एक बार हत्या की कोशिश के लिए आप देखिएगा हाँ यस थ्री जीरो सेवन डील विद कल्पेबल होमोसाइड दैट आई कैन टेक थ्री जीरो सिक्स डील विद यू सुसाइड सो दैट इज फाइन विट बट इट इज फ्रॉम लाइटर जोक बट यस इट्स गुड दैट यू आर कीपिंग इंडियन इज लॉ पार्ट ऑल्स आई एम हैपी टू सी राम दैट वे That's very great. Good. आपको पढ़ना भी हंसते हंसते है लेकिन उसको लाइटली लेके पढ़ोगे तो मजे में पढ़ोगे बिल्कुल और सर ने जैसे जिसी पढ़ाया ना इट वॉज अमेजिंग मतलब इवन वी वर कंटिन्यूस लाफिंग इन सींग हाउ नाइसली इज एक्सप्लेन द कंसेप्ट सेम इज एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रॉम यू स्टूडेंट ऑल्सो वेन एवर यू आर रीडिंग एनी ऑफ योर सब्जेक्ट जस्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कीप योर सेल्फ लाइट डोंट टेक टेंशन Easily read it like a story जैसे आपको story पढ़ते हो ना वैसे पढ़िए because what happen each and every section is correlated and connected with the other part so read in line in connection with the one and the other you'll be easily to retain as well as remember okay so um yeah so there is one more thing that uh, ma'am is it okay if we mention sections in one question and in the next one we don't mention the sections if we forget the sections ha huh? it's perfectly right आपको कोई वहां पर आ, मुझे ये सेक्शन याद है मैं फर्स्ट में सिर्फ इसलिए ना लिखूं क्योंकि मुझे नेक्स्ट का याद नहीं है दैट इज नॉट गुड कहते हैं ना जो जितना हमें पता है एटलीस्ट आप उतना तो लिखोगे ना अगर एक आंसर आता है तो आंसर भी तो एक ही लिखोगे दूसरा गलत तो लिखने की कोशिश नहीं करोगे सिमिलरली अगर आपका एक का श्योर और दूसरे का मैं कह रही चौथे तक भी श्योर नहीं इट्स ओके okay. जो आता है एटलीस्ट वो तो करोगे ना अच्छे से एंड ऑलवेज ट्राई टू अटेम्प फुल पेपर अब भाई टाइम हो गया है और क्वेरीज भी हमारे पास बहुत हैं बट रियली आई एम वेरी ग्लैड टू सी यू ऑल स्टूडेंट्स आर सो इंटरक्टिव एंड मतलब इफ यू वांट देन वी विल नॉट नाउ कंटिन्यू बिकॉज बेचारे बच्चे ब्रेक भी मांग रहे थे यस तो मैम तो एवरी सब्जेक्ट हैज एज पर आर नॉलेज बट बट आप एक बार एफ पे जाके चेक कर सकते हैं अवेलेबल ऑन द वेबसाइट गो अंडर द न्यू स्कीम एंड देर यूल फाइंडिंग द एफ यूज द लेटेस्ट वर्जन रीड दैट एंड मेनी ऑफ योर इश्यूज रिलेटेड टू द न्यू स्कीम विल बी रिजॉल्व देर मोमेंट इट सेल्फ एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट देन वी विल लाइक मोस्ट प्रोबेबली देर विल बी मोर सेशंस नंबर ऑफ रिविजन डिपेंड करता है और अभी तो आपकी स्टार्टिंग है तो आप देखिए अभी तो आप एलबीसी की क्लास थोरो खुद भी रीड करिए साथ में साथ एलबीसी की ये जो आपकी लाइव क्लासेस चल रही है एक चीज और बोलूंगी बहुत बार हमारे पास ना स्टूडेंट्स की क्वेरी आती है एक बार पढ़ा हमें नहीं समझ में आ रहा अरे आप दोबारा जाके उस क्लास को रिविजिट कर सकते हो और इनफैक्ट आपको तो सिर्फ उतना पोर्शन दोबारा देखना है कितनी ही बार आप अगर ध्यान दें तो बड़े बड़े कोर्ट्स में भी जजमेंट्स जो है ना वो दोबारा दोबारा देख ही जाते हैं आपने सुअ मोटो वर्ड तो सुना ही होगा अभी तक क्योंकि हम जब एक चीज को दोबारा पढ़ते हैं दोबारा सुनते हैं हमारे दिमाग की बत्तियां जलती हैं और हमें कुछ नया पता चलता है सो डोंट शाय फ्रॉम यस अस्यूम मोटो इज बाई योर ओन इनिशियटिव वॉट एवर यू सी इट अस्यूम और जो ये बोला गया जो प्रेसिडेंट्स होते हैं जो हमारे लीगल प्रेसिडेंट्स होते हैं उनको हम देखते हैं इफ द सेम सिचुएशन then they take the reference of whatever has been earlier decided they become in the form of the law basically these are the one of the sources of law to ye bhi aapko dhyan rakhna hai ki somewhere at many places legal precedent is being taken into consideration and at many places what the court try court drive the ratio decision die means on the basis of that particular principle what has been given in the previous decision they draw the same conclusion under the same situation given over there but sometimes they may also change their yes. own decisions my dear friends wo kab hota hai डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द फैक्ट एंड द सर्कमस्टांसिस ऑफ द केस कोई भी चीज एक जैसी परिस्थितियां नहीं होती है तो इसलिए इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द फैक्ट एंड अकॉर्डिंगली द डिसीजन में बी टेकन सो आप लोग पढ़िए आप लोगों की और क्वेरीज होती हैं तो प्लीज आप नेक्स्ट सेशन में सर को बताइएगा एंड इफ देर इज अ नीट देन वी विल टेक अनदर सेशन विद यू पीपल इफ देर इज अ नीट ऑफकोर्स 
and we would love and we are really seeing that your students are really enjoying yes. their class and learning and interacting and making this class really very very matlab dekh ke bahut acha lag raha hai your students are enjoying and you are participating this is the most important thing koi teacher ka class leta hai and if it is a participation is there yes. of you students it really matlab hum logo ko lagta hai it's a worth so that we really appreciate and uh, we would like to close the session as right? of now yes mm-hmm. maybe uh, we can try to take we will plan it and we will definitely come back with one more session that way and we would like to end the class thank you students thank it was you. wonderful and great to interact with you through this platform and we would like to end the session on all the best and and bye for now yeah see you soon again and keep smiling and don't take tension at all everything will be fine it's very interesting you will enjoy it just keep on enjoying thank you thank you